Boom. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Hopefully everything's good. Hopefully the volume's all right. Guess what? We just went 250 years back into the past, and we are with Nightfall again. So those are a little out of the loop of the way that we've been doing things on the stream. Um, we we were doing a couple of like different challenges and things to op occupy ourselves. Playing Nightfall was one of them, but then obviously all the Living World Season 3 stuff kicked off. And uh, we spent a while doing that, but I did want to come back to Nightfall. I've been telling you guys I was going to come back to Nightfall. Barely anyone, as far as I remember, watched the previous Nightfall stream. Because uh, it was a really weird time of the day. And I suppose today we're at a bit of a weird time of day as well. Uh, but I do want to play a little bit more. I do want to go further. This is one of my favorite moments of the entire game in Nightfall. And that is the moment that we lose some of our beloved hero companions. So, uh, let's do a bit of a recap because it has been a while. And I used to recap before each stream anyway. Um, so, we're actually in the second continent now, guys. We're in the second region. Actually, I used to call these continents, but that's not right. We're in the second region, kingdom, nation, whatever. Um, we started the game over here in Istan. Also, guys, tell me if that weird stream bug thing hits us. I'd really appreciate that. Um, but yeah, so uh, we completed this stuff. Uh, we found out that the Cornans had been funding Corsairs back on the mainland. Everything blew up, basically. And we've sailed out from the consulate docks here uh, to attack their capital, Gandara, the Moon Fortress. But as we attacked their capital, um, their leader, Varish Ossa, summoned straight up demons. Uh, and one specific one that seemed to gouge on uh, on Cormier's face. Thanks for the, the, the little host there. Uh, Ahiko uh, Cake. And, uh, and, and we all got stranded. We all got separated. Um, so we've, we've met a few allies as we've been playing so far. Um, so if we have a look at the heroes tab here. We've got Kos, our best friend. But he's missing right now, and we can't actually play with him. You see this add hero button? It doesn't work. Kos is missing. He's actually been taken away. Now, uh, I love thinking about this, right? There is an alternate universe out there where, basically, Guild Wars 2 was never conceived. And ArenaNet stuck with this game. And for all intents and purposes, this is a totally different game to the sequel, right? Um, had they done that, <coughs> obviously, we would have had Guild Wars Utopia. Uh, Guild Wars Utopia would have been set in some mysterious distant region who knows where it was uh it seemed to have been hinted at a little bit here in nightfall with baltech did i show you guys baltech on the streams in the end I don't, i'm not sure i did i totally will we'll do like a bonus thing at some point going to baltech um but it seems fair to say that they would have added more heroes it's a weird one though because obviously you, there would have just been billions and billions and billions of heroes in the end it's like, well, which ones do you want to pick? They seem to lose some flavor or something. Maybe they would have ended up locking off certain heroes to certain regions and certain skills to certain regions and stuff like that. Kind of like uh, trading card games end up having to do. You know, they, they have their sort of their one set that's actually functioning at the time. But uh, I always like to think of if Utopia came out, if these other things came out, what they would have done is this mechanic a lot more. That kind of, in my opinion, it makes me think of Final Fantasy a lot, where you have an ally on your team, and then that ally gets removed for some reason. They disappear, they split off into their own little party, and and so on and so on and so on. Uh, and I love thinking about that. I think that would have been really cool, really interesting quirk and, and, and take on the gameplay. They could have removed henchmen altogether, so you, you're just sort of meeting people as you go. Uh, they could have got rid of this formal party limit or whatever. Well, when playing with other players, that, that party limit's kind of something. Um, but then even better, I like to think of a world where that they combine this idea of getting rid of a hero with uh, another idea they had in Guild Wars 1, which was the bonus mission pack. And what the bonus mission pack let you do was play as great other characters, other heroes. You'd get their skill bar, you'd get their animations, their model, and you'd do a, a mission tailored for them. And so the idea would be in Utopia, there could be a moment like this where you lose one of your best friends, your best heroes, maybe three of them or so. And then you don't see them for ages in the campaign. And then eventually you get a mission where you get to play as them. And see their alternate perspective through like a, a small part of the campaign. And then you return. There's a lot of uh, really interesting directions that Guild Wars 1 could have gone in. It's discussions that Guild Wars 2 only players would never care about these days. But um, but I like thinking about them. And I, I like wondering where ArenaNet would be at in 2016 if this is what they would kept going with. I wonder how, how, how much they would have been able to hammer their engine up. Surely they would have gone to a second product. I don't know. Anyway, anyway, so yeah. So uh, we're, we're stranded in Yollenhaven. The hub of social and business gatherings. Yollenhaven is located at a major viaduct and, along with water, disseminates gossip, news, 
and informal trade among the farmers in the area. Such gatherings have made this station moderately wealthy and travellers will be comfortable here. Sorry about the sound of the train there, guys. We do have the right mic, don't we? I think we do. Okay, so uh, so yeah, and the, and the main quest we're doing right now, uh, is this really all i got? Five people instead of eight? This is going to be quite hard then, because we've lost costs. This is going to be kind of difficult. So the main quest that we're doing is we've got to get to like a, a safe haven, basically. So we spoke to this person here, Zudush Dejerin. Uh, it was a while ago we did the stream. Hopefully you guys can remember that this guy's here, though. He does not like Sun Spears whatsoever. Um, but uh, but we need to speak to him, and he's, he's basically saying, okay, there might be a suitable place at a nearby village that we can hide ourselves, a village called Ronjok. Okay, so we're going to Ronjok. There's a man named Elder Jonah there, and we want to talk to him about finding a sanctuary from the Cornans. Okay, because like th this, this person here is a Cornan. But it's just a peasant. It's not the military. They're not super pissed with us. And don't forget, we are Sun Spears, okay? Sun Spears used to uh, explore and protect and serve all of Ilona. But then only very recently, Varish was like, no, screw the Sun Spears. And now all of a sudden, it's like we're at war or something. Sorry, phone. Come on. Turn that stuff off. There we go. Uh, so I think that je the idea is generally the, the, the people here are sort of sympathetic to us. So it's not so bad. Um, you know, as with the other streams, guys, you will get to vote on the hero builds, you'll get to vote on what we do, you'll get to troll me to oblivion if that's really what you still care about doing. Um, do we even have a melee person anymore to cast Strength of Honor on? We don't, do we? Oh, no, we do. We have Milani. Alright, so there we go. Let's, let's get Dunkoro to cast a buff on Milani there. That's cool. <clears throat> okay, uh, Melandry be praised, says this wandering priest. I'm glad you're here. Whatever's happening to Corner has disturbed several large insect hives across the countryside. Now those creatures are everywhere. Melandria herself will provide you with a blessing for this service. Would you like to take, join in the fight to slay insects? Sure, we will. I love how dis distinguished some of these designs are. Look at this. So interesting. This is like a... Uh, I don't know. I wonder if you could mimic any of this stuff in Guild Wars 2 very well. Uh, what's this? We got raffles. Are we having a 100k subscriber video? Uh, Elementus, I hit that six months ago. I know we're still only around 100 subscribers, but that's because the expansion came out and I've not really been covering other games, and so obviously I, I, I stalled, basically. But, uh, but yeah, so so I, I think I talked about that at Christmas. Um, and I explained, oh yeah. Do you know what? It's funny. It's weird sometimes playing Guild Wars 1. Okay, sorry, I gotta I got get the, uh, the volumes just right here. It's sometimes really weird playing Guild Wars 1. Like, for example, uh, Guild Wars 2, when you press F11 to open the options menu, it always opens in the middle of the screen. It never remembers where that panel used to be. And certainly not between log-offs, like complete closes down on the clients, right? But Guild Wars, Guild Wars 1 remembers that crap. Guild Wars 1, if I press F11 right now, it comes up in the bottom right-hand corner. Every time. I wish that the Guild Wars 2 version of this did this, because then I could uh, audio balance better uh, for cutscenes and stuff when we're doing Guild Wars 2 streams. It's just like weird little things. It's like, oh yeah, there's a little bit more polish there. It's a little bit more, a little bit more. And of course, people are hypercritical whenever that happens. All right, we've got to be very careful because people, people are, our, our players are going to be dying and stuff. This is going to be a hard run here, guys. We're supposed to have eight players. And at that, we're supposed to have eight level 80 players. Uh, eight level 20 players. Wow, that's crazy. Did you hear what I just said? Wow. Uh, instead, we only have five. And worse... We only have, they're only level 15. All of our party is level 15 and we're fighting level 20 insects right now. So we have to be really careful not to over aggro extra patrols or, of insects and things in the area. Um, remember what I told you guys at the very start of these streams? That a lot of your focus playing Guild Wars 1 regrettably. Because again, it was, this is not a perfect game and there are a great many things Guild Wars 2 does far better. Uh, it, regrettably in this game you spend most of your time just staring at this compass up here. Okay. In fact, I'm noticing on the stream, it's a little small, right? For those of you that don't play full screen because you want chat, it's a little small. There you go. So you want to focus on this. This bad boy up here, you want to look at the little red dots. Those are the patrols. And you've got to be very careful. So here, look, we've got Cornans that we're fighting. But we also have these insects wandering forward. And you don't want to get caught in all of those. So here we're going to have some trouble because Milani's dragging those insects. And the Cornans might come with her. I'm going to cast Signal of Synergy on her because she's low. And then we'll try and take out these insects. So it's 3v5 here, but they're just way stronger than we are. Basically, the thing. But we got Suske. Guild Wars 1 Meteor Shower there. I love the animation for it. He's going to be knocking them down. Look, so the Cornans are still here. And I'm really worried about uh, Milani. What did we just get hit with? 
Ouch, they've got uh, some kind of mage hitting us. Oh dear. Okay, that guard's dead. Let's drop some more heals. We're actually a bit sturdier than I expected, guys, considering how, how badly outnumbered and outclassed we are here. What's going on over there? We have a scribe. So that scribe is the is the caster, I guess. Down Koro is about to die, and that's going to be really bad. I just healed him up. Uh, we got to kill that scribe. We got to kill the scribe up by the tree, guys. Spread out, everyone, as well, because they keep getting AOE. They oh no, Down Koro, he just killed. Do there you go. Oh, by the way, he just cast Rodgott's Invocation there. Uh, so these are the enemy skills. Rodgott's Inv Invocation was that skill I was talking about yesterday to do with the Wizard's Tower. But uh, Rodgort eventually got renamed into Howland. From Howl's Moving Castle, in theory. Alright, so we, we've raised each other up and stuff. You missed those cast bars? I don't know. I do. I prefer the Guild Wars 2 version when it comes to that. Like, I do prefer the, the thought that we're actually watching the animations. See, Guild Wars 2 need... Guild Wars 1 needed cast bars, okay? It ne we're, we're probably going to get killed by this Corn and Pachal. There's too many of them, I think. We can try. I'll try and cast a Reflect Frame as well. Uh, Guild Wars 1 needed it because they didn't have enough unique animations. But Guild Wars 2, they've got so many more unique animations. Everything is identifiable. And, and people sort of lose their shit as well. It's just not acceptable in Guild Wars 2 anymore to add something that's got basically no animation but has an effect. People would not like that. They'd see that as a marked quality drop. So yeah, guys, there's little competitions going on in chat. Thank you very much to Fliganti for those. Um, I think when we get to the Haven, guys, we'll get to make another decision here. They are scoring kills on us. So, again, a reminder. It's bad if you're dying in Guild Wars 1. Because, unlike in Guild Wars 2 where you just rally and fucking wander off. Because the devs completely mishandled the mechanics of breaking armor. And they completely mishandled the mechanic of death penalty. Okay, in Guild Wars 2. Death penalty in Guild Wars 1 actually still means something. It's... It, it's, it's a bad thing if people are dying. There is a long-term attrissive... Uh, mechanic in this game, which the, the second one, in my opinion, so desperately needs. Uh, not that many veteran players will have the forethought to really understand that, in my opinion. That's a bit snobby what I just said there, but I do really believe it. Here we go, so pick them up, Dan Corey. Yeah, so we did a video last night about um, new races in Guild Wars. There's one thing I wish I had said. Oh, we can't res Dunk. Dunk Corey's dead, that's it. That's obviously another problem. If you don't have the right builds, there is no way, there's no air press F and everybody can res. That I like in Guild Wars 2, by the way. This isn't supposed to be in all about compare, compare, compare. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Last night we did a video about uh, races, the idea of having new races in uh, Guild Wars 2, and like the the problems that can come from that, the reasons why it may never happen, what you guys would like the middle ground to be. So here we got a graveyard. There's just a lot of enemies over there, like a lot. What? How are they aggroed on us? What? Why? Since when? I think we're gonna wipe here, but as long as we can score one kill. Jesus Christ, Milani! Yeah, we've got two people dead now. And we're going to get AoE'd out. We're, we're, we're basically dead. I don't know why Milani was so aggressive there. It's also annoying that in Guild Wars 1, not all the they didn't appropriately deal with the fact... Come on, kill this here, kill this here, kill this here, kill this here. Come on, chuck that spit. Yeah, good. Whee! Alright, I'll just take the death here. It's annoying that the insects don't fight the corners because they should. More often. Alright, let me finish my, my thought. Uh, the one thing I wish I'd mentioned on that race video, talking about like what veteran players feel they need, even though sometimes it's wrong. There's more people uh, sort of saying, oh, I don't care about a new race because it doesn't impact gameplay, blah, 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 blah. I wish I'd made it clearer that what's important about new race isn't necessarily going to be something that the veteran players feel. Now, as a veteran player, and, and when I say veteran, I really don't like the, the, the semantics of that term. It conjures the wrong stuff to mind. But I, 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 as a long-standing player, as an established player, as an existing player, if you are any of these things, you're going to be more lukewarm to a new race. Uh, to me, the greatest strength of a new race is that it's an entry point for newbies. All right, And people are selfish, generally speaking. People only think about their own perspective, generally. They don't think about the overall health of the game. They don't value stuff like revamps, the leveling mechanics, stuff like that, even though it's all very, very important. Um, and I, I really think that's... That's one of the big things for me right now. I feel like there's a bit more, too much of a jerk in the direction of, oh no, we don't need new races. When in truth, there is a lot of value. It's just most people don't see it or care for it because they think they're the only community that needs to be catered to. Um, which in my opinion is very short-sighted and, and, and foolish, but 
So yeah, that's sort of another example, in my opinion, of, of one of these things where when you, when you become an established player, it can become very easy to forget what what are otherwise worthwhile things. Look at this. This is crazy. What's happening here is this spotter... I forgot about this mechanic completely. This spotter has a massive aggro radius. So our aggro radius on the compass should be just this. This is called earshot. Or it's just outside earshot, I think. Um, and that's where you aggro people. But this guy is aggroing from really, really, really far away. Because he's like a scout. Because he's like a... And as soon as he gets in combat, it pulls the rest of his friends in combat. So I think that's what happened with Milani earlier. Which is quite crazy. Uh, what Guild Wars 1 did, like, again, aggro management was a huge part of this game. A huge part of this game. Basically a non-existent thing in Guild Wars 2. I was hoping the Guild Wars 2 raids would start playing with it a bit more, but so far they haven't, really. Um, but th there was a huge thing to the point where the end game content in Guild Wars 1 was... I I'm not using my skills here because I'm, like, moving my hands like a fucking teacher or something. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, like, the end game in this game would play with that like a lot more mobs would write uh, aggro on you from a lot further away right it's very 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 cool i'm missing overlays tyrannius rb welcome 11 months dude 11 months you're a, you're an elite few right now uh what if with a new race they got uh they get a personal story from the zaitan timeline but not actually have the said race join the fight against zaitan or would that not be a good thing i'd love that dude i would love that yeah that would be very 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 cool to me um, <clears throat> but I'm very enthusiastic about the story, and I, I, I'd be up for seeing any extra facet of, of the Zaitan story. Because, again, I think it was mishandled so much. Um, we, we need to target the priest here. Zealot's Benediction is like a big heal that also gives you a bit of energy back as a monk. It was always an interesting skill. It's like one of those heals that was just... It was good, but it was very punishing if you got it interrupted or mitigated in some way. Um, yeah, I would love that. So, so the idea here, guys, is... Let's say we're playing the Tengu. Um, and that's become a playable race. They need a personal story. So what do you do with that personal story? Do you set it as a part of the Prime Orders arc? Or do you give them a personal, a proper personal story um, for the uh, for the Zaitan arc? And so then the question is, well, but hold on. The Zaitan story dictates that no Tengu got involved. Or on mass Tengu got, didn't get involved. So what you do is you, you write the Tengu story. Here you go, it's happening again. The spot is charging us, see? And he's casting us. Um, so yeah, you write the you write the story uh, so that it's showing why the Tengu never got involved. It's still the Zaitan timeline. I, th I think the problem with that for a lot of people, though, is... Um, or I think Arena Net's fear. I, th I think sometimes as a developer or a TV show writer or, 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 or a screenwriter for film... Or even a novelist. I think it's very easy to underestimate the intelligence of your audience. Like quite a lot. You know you know when you get like this ham-fisted dialogue. Where it's clear that a show or something is hinting something at you. Uh, and then they just have to shove it in your face. Because they're scared of all the people who have missed it otherwise. And then it sort of it kills it. It kills the experience. Um, that happens in a whole range of different ways. And I think that one thing that would happen with, with that proposed idea. Of setting the Tengu and the Zaitan stuff. But they're not actually getting involved. Blah blah blah. Is I think ArenaNet probably would be wide. Their audience isn't uh, isn't going to be receptive to splitting their attention between two stories at once. Now, I personally think that'd be really cool. I could be wrong though. I mean, what the hell do I know? I'm just speculating here. But so yeah, what what I'm saying is they might not like the idea of releasing an expansion where they've got some, some Zaitan story in there. But it's not really related at all to all the Prime Order story that they're doing. And then they do, right, like, and, and they might be worried that the audience doesn't have an, the intelligence or the, uh, the presence of mind to, to hold, hold all these, juggle all these balls in their mind at once. They'll probably want to keep it focused. They'll probably want to tell one core story. And ultimately, I, I agree with that, right? Like, that's my biggest issue with the, with the original personal story. That it was just split too much. And that's kind of what we're suggesting again here. So... I like it in principle, but in practice, it probably wouldn't work. There you go. I rambled my way into uh, an actual answer here. So here we go, guys. We have made it. This was not easy. Uh, we've made it to Ronjok. There's another wandering priest. A priest of Grenth. Death is my ally. But the souls of those slain by the Cornan army go not to Grenth. They go elsewhere. The Cornan military venerates some dark power. And her men do service to that force. They must be cleansed. Send the corner military to Grant, and he will reward you for his blessing. This is really cool. What we're looking at here, guys, all right? This dialogue here, generally speaking, this is shit dialogue. This is this is your heart rewards equivalent. You know, like you do a heart in Guild Wars 2, 
and it gives you used to give you that mail and now it comes up in a pop up in the middle and it's just on it's like the most boring copy pasted uninspired thank you message from an npc and there's like 130 of them in the game right like and it's just it's just nothing well once again this this is sort of the equivalent it's just to fulfill the, it's just a bit of text for you as you claim a bounty that they know most people are going to skip but they've actually got some really cool idea here so what we have guys is we have and I'm, I, I haven't spoiled stuff really in the Nightfall story just yet. But here we have Varish Osa, who's clearly getting involved with demonic forces. She stole that scroll, if you remember. She talked about something called Nightfall. She had demons at Gandara. And she's also got her regular forces, these, these men we've been killing here. Um, the Corn and Military. And here we're hearing, wait, when the Corn and Military die, they're not going to Grenth like all the other humans? They're not just going straight to the Underworld? But there's something weird going on? They've been empowered or changed or corrupted in some way? They've been, they venerate some dark force. So cool. The, the nostalgia is strong right now. I'm glad. I'm glad the nostalgia is strong right now. Here we go. Ronjok. And do pay close attention here, guys, to what these areas look like. Because the game does something really cool with these later. So, Herdsman Zekanu says, Elder Jonah, truly you know how much of a crisis this will be if ignored. And Jonah says, I hear your concerns, Herdsman Zekanu, but my hands are tied. And Zekanu says, Elder Jonah, it is your duty to protect us. Why have you not pressed this issue with the captain of the garrison? And he says, I have appealed to the garrison many times on this issue, only to be rebuffed each time. What more can I do? He says, take this matter straight to the capital, to the war marshal herself if you must. These ruffians must be stopped or it'll be the death of, all, of us all. Am I the only one who sees this? And Zekanu says, uh, how will we feed our children if there is no meat left? Soon the garrison will have taken it all. The soldier, and Jonah responds by saying, the soldiers seem to be far hungrier as of late. Or perhaps there's something else in that garrison with a powerful hunger for meat. I've implored the local captain to have mercy on us, but to no avail. And Zekanu says, uh, grazing in the shadow of the fort only makes them easy targets. Moving them out of sight makes them in the mi uh, might take them off the minds of the soldiers. Can your sun spears help us? So this, is, uh, I don't know, this is the kind of thing, right? Like, we're in a random little village in Corner, and we're hearing, oh god, there's... The, the, you know the effects that Varesh is building of these these demons and this crazy corrupted military is having on people. These guys are starved for meat at the moment because it's been taken off to the garrison, and there could be something there. I don't know, man. Uh, you can accomplish so much when you say "fuck off" to voice acting, and you just have a, lo a load of text, right? Ah, uh, you can accomplish so much. All right, Zachary. I don't believe I've ever seen you around here before. Was there something you needed? If not, please move along. Would you? I'm a very busy man. No, need, no time to gallivant around the countryside looking for adventure. Like some. Who's like some? Well, that is also like every little bit, right? This, this is referencing something else. Like some. Hmm. <laughs> uh, we got Chuno over here. This cool little place down here. You were just playing this quest early today. That's awesome, dude. I am in charge of defending and securing this village. You think you can do a job, better job? And we got this guy here. He's got a cool outfit, actually. I quite like what he's wearing. Uh, he's a weapons dude. And we'd need to craft some stuff, so let's not worry about that. Janira? Ah, oh, hi, wooden spear tato. I am Janira, the village healer. What I know of the healing arts, I learned from my mother and honed through experience. Mostly, I assist with childbirth and minor illness. But... Should the horrors of battle invade our village, I give you my word I will do all I can to help. Has Guild Wars 2 ever, in a single place, for any of the races, spoken in-game of childbirth? Uh, and the Savari, or, you know, being born fully grown doesn't, doesn't count anymore. Has it ever done it? See, th that feels like a bit of a tonal shift to me, you know? Oh, don't let's not talk about babies coming out of vagina. No, 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 it's too adult. Let's not do that anymore. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I'm such a twat. All right, here we go. Let's talk to Jaina. Welcome to Ronjok, Traveller. You all must be here for a reason, because this place isn't exactly a popular tourist attraction. What with all the corn and militia nearby. Hunted. So, you are the Sun Spears who challenged Varesh. I am not surprised you'd have fobbed you off on me. So remember, back at the town, uh, at Yolen Haven, he was like, oh, I'll just go to Elder Jonah. Um, 
And now he's saying, oh, he, he, we've just been fobbed off. He's been bitter about sun spears for years. But I'm afraid you cannot stay here either. Unless... Oh, uh, wait, 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 sorry, I, I messed that up. I put my village at risk simply by talking to you. Unless... Yes. I think I know the perfect place. There are some caverns behind the village. They were a part of a temple complex once, and flowed with sweet water. But since then, they've become overrun with vile creatures. Cleanse that place of its current inhabitants, and it will serve as a sanctuary for your group. Talk to Guardsman Bansi. He will direct you on your way. Okay. So remember, uh, on the last stream, I don't know how many of you guys here today were at the last stream. On the last stream, we did actually talk a little bit as well about how... Uh, in Cantha and in Prophecies, you had like these ideas of becoming ascended or you did like some big ritual. Uh, Nightfall really didn't have an equivalent of that, but this is it. So this temple that we're about to cleanse, once we cleanse it, it's kind of like we become ascended here. Kind of, mechanically speaking. Not in the law, but mechanically speaking we do. Um, so Garzmin, Barsi. Tread carefully. As Ulta Jonas says, we have no more to lose than our highs if we don't do what is right. So yeah, these people are a little bit bitter to, to the Cornans, to the military presence in the area, to them taking so many of their resources and their livestock and blah blah blah. And so they're a little bit more sympathetic to us. Do you know what this is? This reminds me of looking out there where you can clearly see the edge of the map. This is one of those things that just reminds you that the Guild Wars 1 engine is the same as the Guild Wars 2 engine. Because that right there looks exactly like, say, when you break out the Silver Waste or, or any map really, right? Like the way that they sculpt the landscape and all of it, it's exactly the same. That same hard... Uh, you know, like, line where everything just disappears. It's interesting. I always like seeing that. Like that. Mm. Nice, some Nightfall gameplay. The storyline that tied prophecies and factions all together. Yeah, tied everything together, really. Everything. There's a video I want to do, and I'm desperate not to talk about on the stream. But I want to talk... Somebody brought... Uh, we, I, I was on Reddit. We ended up having, like, kind of a cool conversation about it. Um... We were talking about, like, an Elseworld version of the game. A world where the Flameseeker prophecies were never written. And it ends up really interesting. And especially because of the way the uh, Nightfall ties everything together. It's really damn cool. Alright, so here, guys. I'm going to flag all my guys over there. And we have to be really careful. Because what you're seeing over this ledge here. Are a bunch of, a lot of insects, as you can see, a lot. Uh, but then there's a couple more here. These termites. These termites I want to grab on their own. And pull them right round the corner. There we go, see? And so we're... Can someone confirm to me you can actually hear the game the game audio and stuff right now? And now we can, now we can fight them. Insects are kind of cool in Guild Wars 1 because, like I said, uh, Guild Wars 1, all the enemies use player skills. And this caused a, this was a nightmare for the devs. A nightmare. It meant that a PvP balance patch could uh, could make an early game mission really difficult. But there's a there's a warrior skill called Frenzy in this game, um, just like in the second game. But it makes you take double damage in Guild Wars One. Uh, you attack faster, but you take double damage. And uh, uh, that it used to do that in Guild Wars Two as well, but then they got rid of that that downside to it. Um, and that might seem bizarre to you guys, but remember that quickness used to be a lot stronger and so on, so on, so on. So on. Uh, but um, what they did that was I always thought was quite clever is they gave the insects in in this campaign frenzy. Oh, well, that felt really badass. That was some dragon hunter stuff there. Let's grab these ones as well. There we go. They gave these guys frenzy so that they feel like bugs that you sort of squish really quickly because they take big damage. Now they'll threaten you. They'll do some damage themselves, but you know they they feel squishy little bugs because they have frenzy. So you know like. Uh, like, just think about the development nightmare that that, that that truly is, okay? You now are in a situation where, let's say Frenzy got too overpowered. Or Frenzy was disgustingly underpowered in PvP. Um, or, or even only in one, it, one game type of PvP, right? And you want to buff it. You want to take that double damage thing away. But you can't because insects in, in one of your campaigns lose flavor. And you might think, oh, well, well, simple. Just, just add another way of them taking double damage. But, you know, you can't, for every little balance decision, you know, for one skill out of maybe 30 that are going into that one patch, uh, then have to go do all these little bespoke changes in random areas of PvE. You can see through, through hopefully, this discussion why Guild Wars 1 was just not sustainable. Not unless, again, they, they decided to, uh, you know, uh, 
to do what trading cards games have to do, basically, where where eventually they say, all right, only these skills are legal, and only these skills are legal in this region, this region, this region. Which is what I absolutely believe Guild Wars 1 would have ended up doing, because it just would not function otherwise. Uh, WP, do you use WAS or Clip to move? I always, this is funny, this is weird, because I always, always, always used WASD for years, okay? I'll remind you guys, it was only earlier this year that I've played more Guild Wars 2 than Guild Wars 1. Okay, let that sink in, alright? I've only just very recently played more of the second game than this game. I played a lot of this game. This was like the teenage years game for me, right? Like, like all the time. That and a few other franchises. But so, um, so I played a shit ton of this game. And so when I tell you I use WASMD to move around, I, I, I'm telling you I spent thousands of hours using WASMD in Guild Wars 1. And I was a bit of a snob about it as well. I was like, oh, it's more immersive, it's more active, the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is more, more, uh, more enticing. And, you know, these are all reasons why Guild Wars 2, when they started really putting out press, press uh, information and stuff for it, it appealed to me so much because here we had the devs saying the same stuff. Oh, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the movement in Guild Wars 2 is going to be bad. Because there were people that bitched, right? When Guild Wars 2 was being announced, there were people that bitched. They whined. They were like, oh, what? We're, we're, we, we can't click to move anymore. This is a piece of crap. Blah, 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 blah. And I was on the forums saying, oh, no, Guild Wars 2 is going to be so good. Look, Suske just blew them all up there. Did you see that? Oh, my God. And, I, you know, I love that about Guild Wars 2. So I was, I was a snob. I was a WASD snob. However, when I come back to the game these days, maybe not right now on the stream the whole time, I don't use WAS and D anymore. And that sounds crazy, doesn't it? I just don't use it anymore. Even though I've spent all my time in the sequel where, where click to move. I'm saying that I moved to click to move. That's what I use now, click to move. It feels more comfortable, feels more natural to me. It's a complete 180 of what I was like for years and years and years and years. And I think the reason I do click to move now is because I played a few games in 2015 and 2014, I suppose alongside Guild Wars 2 that got me really comfortable with click to move games like Path of Ex Exile Divinity Original Sin whatever else, I think there was maybe another one and so now when I come back to Guild Wars 1 I'm like yeah click to move yeah 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 and I do it do it all the time we're going to have to be really really high pressure on the healer here so here we're targeting these queens, these big fat grubs, these squishy grubs I always liked that they made the grub looking ones. Like, look at this thing. It's disgusting. Uh, the, the healers. Because sort of in my mind, what, what this is here... We might, we might die on this. I'm really worried about this right now. How are they healing so heavily? Why, what the fuck? Are there two healers? Oh, there we go. That's a good meter shower. It's a really good meter shower. Suzuki just died. Come on, finish it off, finish it off, finish it off. Okay, good. It died, it died, it died. I'm really concerned right now, though. Okay, Suzuki's up again. I can't remember what happens if you die in this mission, if it just wipes you. In which case, we'd go all the way back to Yolen Haven, and that would be pretty, pretty scary. Um, what was I talking about? Yeah, the grubs. Because, like, I always think of, you know, like, anyone in the UK, you might have known a show called I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, right? And, uh, or, or, you know, if you watch, like, these stupid survival shows, like, you're a fan of Bear Grylls or something, they always eat these fat lava and grubs and stuff, and they, like, pop in their mouth, like, and, and they're like, oh, yeah, these are the best kinds of insects. They're full of tasty protein and nutrients and stuff like that, right? Like, so I always think, oh, yeah, these, these are the best ones to stay alive out in the wilderness. And so, of course, then they're the monks. <laughs> Here, we're keeping you alive. I don't know. This is a bit stupid of me. Okay, so what we got here? I think this is the last shrine. Uh, we don't have a healer here, but we do have a boss. We've got a level 24 Paragon boss. So what I'm actually going to do here, guys, is I'm going to flag our heroes out. Spread them out. Like that. So here you can see I've got these flags. And I'm going to try my best to aggro. I mean, this would be amazing. If we just charged in and meteor showered them when they were all packed together... Suske. I'm really scared. Again, because look, this is a pretty big group. Well, mind you, these aren't all level 20. Okay, here we go. So, Suske, I need you to meet your shower instantly, bro. Oh, oh, okay. Alright, 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 alright. So. So, what if we do it like this? Let's just see if we can get him to pass. No, that's not good. 
Oh my god, he got destroyed before he could even cast it. Alright, that's a big problem. That's a big problem. Jesus Christ. Oh no, I think I fucked this, guys. I think I fucked this. I think my tactic was not the good tactic. Go, Talcora, run away with me over here. Wow, they, 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 they broke aggro so fast before. What happened? Oh my god, Milani made it, but oh dear. Milani's dead, and I'm going to be dead next. Well, we'll see if we can revive. I don't know if we can. Oh, we do revive in here. Okay, good. Woo! Alright, it's not that punishing. When I was watching I'm a Celebrity, them eating grubs actually the least disgusting thing they eat. Yeah, well, it's probably... Like, you have to make the assumption. This is really scary that they've got the portal icon right there. Like, you're about to walk through a portal and accidentally zone out. Yeah, you, you, like, obviously they're not going to make celebrities eat disgusting, you know, genuinely dangerous things. The other one was always, they used to do, like, kangaroo testicles, right? Like, just raw can kangaroo testicles. Like, they'd bite into it and they'd, like, they would explode with, like, white stuff. Okay. Yeah, the skills that we're using, guys, have been... Uh, if you're wondering why we've got such a crappy comp, uh, it's because of what everybody voted on us using. Okay, this time what I'm going to do is I'm just going to charge in. And we're going to see what happens. We've just got to burst a couple of things down. And hopefully they'll ball up on this bridge. Look at Sus Susuke, bro. Bro, bro, bro. Oh, oh, he did cast the meter shower. He did cast the meter shower. And they're in frenzy. That's it. They're dying, they're dying, they're dying, they're dying. Keep Milani up. He got res. We scored at least one kill there. People are getting a lot of death penalty though. This is a problem. Yeah, kill that lance. Kill the lance. Kill the lance. Okay, good. Another thing dead. Okay, it's just me and the two smiters right now. Me and one of the smiters. Alright, there's only two of them left alive though. Come on, Taukoro. Taukoro, you and me. You and me, baby. Let's do it. Here we go. Come on. Kill it. Deep wound. Must finish it off. Yeah. Oh, it's Paragon v Paragon. Epic battle of the century. Final boss fight. Oh, I have no health. And we're dead. <laughs> oh, dear. It's okay. We'll make it. Oh, no. There's another shrine over there. Oh, God. All right. Well, look. We'll be all right. There's another shrine, though. Damn. I think we'll be okay, though. This is probably, the, with the way that we're playing Nightfall right now, Twitch voting on all the goddamn builds, being underleveled, having not enough party members, this is probably the hardest, honestly, that Nightfall will get. Except maybe in the Realm of Torment at the end. Maybe, maybe when we get to that area, it won't be very good. Could be worse. You could have Livia thinking she's a tank 24-7. I swear that Hero AI is special. What, just for, for Livia? It's because she's special. Yeah, so basically, the, the problem here, for those that don't really play Guild Wars 1, that's scaring me about this other group over here, is death penalty is a real mechanic, and we've just all died a load. So if you look at Susuke here, he's got only 191 health. So he's just basically going to get owned. Like, super owned if he gets targeted. Uh, and everyone's, like, feeling that sting right now. So obviously there's only one enemy here. He can only hit one person. That's Milani right now. So, so she's good. She's fine. Also, when we kill him because he's a boss, we'll get uh, a flat decrease on all of our death penalty, but not by that much. She died. So when she tried to heal the warrior, she ran next to him and they changed the skills later. All right, there we go. Okay, that's that shrine done. Look at how nasty this water looks. Jesus. That looks like something from a PlayStation 1 game, <laughs> actually. Alright. I do love the high frames you get. So. Okay, alright, and finally we got this group. We gotta we gotta burst down the queen. If possible. Uh, let me just cast strength of honor and Melania again. So we can get as much damage as possible. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's kill these things over here. We might get to take our death penalty down a little bit more. Uh, about your last video, don't you think they already have developed Tengu related stuff because Tengu were there in dev for the release? Yeah, okay, so you're not the first person to say that, or maybe you're the same person that mentioned it before. Um, 
so so yeah this video i basically said look is it too much to 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 implement tengu and stuff oh, we're just not going to get it because it's too much not only is it a lot to to retrofit all the stuff they've already got to do but also forever more with the development of this franchise now they're going to struggle even harder now uh to keep up with all this stuff that they got to do look at that damage milani does now that's so good um and so your response is well hold on they wanted tengu in at launch so what if they've already got stuff in the can I, and i think you might be right i've always been a little bit incredulous about this so basically guys if you don't know in the guild wars 2 art book for the collector's edition hold on let me All right, hi, I'm back. I've got the Guild Wars 2 Collector's Edition here now. Okay. In the Collector's... Oh, we'll, we'll watch this cutscene. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Praise Melandru. The purity of the water is restored. And with it, we gain a base of operations. A place to rest. A place to plan. A place from which to strike back against Varish. General Morga. General Bale. How goes the search for survivors? Those traitorous Sunspear dogs are scattered across Corner. We are picking them off one by one. Do you need any reinforcements from Jahai? Reinforcements? They are broken. No threat at all. No threat? I have always found the Sun Spears to be very resourceful. Don't worry, General. They have no place to hide unless the ground itself swallows them up. More excellent writing there. Oh my god, you will never believe what just happened. I just smashed the hourglass that I got given in season two. I swear to god that just happened. No! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh dear, dear, dear. Okay, we'll, we'll have a look at that in a second. More, more good writing there, by the way, because what they did... I'm devastated at that. Oh, is they, uh... Oh no, they, um... They mentioned uh, no place to hide unless you get swallowed up by the ground, and then of course that's something that's going to happen later. I can't believe it! I can't believe it! It looks so good! Basically what happens is, uh, oh, on my shelf, okay, I had the Guild Wars 2 Collector's Edition, like, upright, um, and then the hourglass in front of it, and I just opened it up to try and find the art book for you guys to read about the Tengu thing. Um, and then I, I couldn't find the art book, so I closed the, 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 the case up and put it back on the shelf behind the hourglass. But the lid to the case wasn't properly on. And so it, it opened and the lid came down and the lid sort of gently leaned against the hourglass and then slid the hourglass off the side and it just smashed. Did you guys hear the smash? I can't believe it, Logger support ticket. I can't believe it. Ah. Oh. Can I show you how it looks now? Uh... Well, I did take a picture. I'll see if I can show you guys that later. I'm devastated. There's no way to fix something like that either. I'll tell you one thing I could do. The truth is, uh, that hourglass that the devs, uh sent out that was actually just something they got from amazon i think basically it had a marble block which they engraved uh saying living world season two blah 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 which was really awesome and 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 sort of special but the hourglass that they sat on top of it was actually just something from amazon as far as i'm aware and they sent different versions of the hourglass to different people it doesn't look anything like the in-game model it's it's a really tacky asshole thing to to point out and be a douche about or whatever but what I'm thinking now is since I just accidentally broke and smashed this one, maybe I can just go on Amazon and buy buy a new one from from Amazon and put it on the, the, the marble pl plate thing and then it's like I've got it back. 
I will have a look at that later. I'm devastated. I am de this is the fault. This is the fault of the person in chat who got me talking about the. <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, but yeah, so to answer that, oh man, to answer that question, the show must go on. Um, the art book says I couldn't even find the art book in there. I don't know where it is. Uh, the art book says that they were originally looking at Tengu as like a sixth race, um, or or the original candidate for the fifth race or whatever. And the art book explains that they'd actually built a city. Um, and, uh, but now all you'd see is the walls. But I, I, like I said, I think I'm a little incredulous of that. And what I mean by that is, I reckon that that was just sort of some flavorful embellishment on the idea of the Tengu. Not that they actually had much work done on it at all. I'm act, I would actually be very surprised if there really was a city devved back there. And if there was, then what Arena Net should do is show that off because that would be badass. Not, 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 not to say, oh, here's the Tengu, blah, blah, blah. But just to be like, here's what could have been. I remember when the South Sun patch came out, uh, there were a few assets there, like uh, like big nests and roost-style things. And it looked like maybe these were assets that were once upon a time going to be associated with the Tengu areas and then sort of got reused in the end. But uh, more to the point, can they implement the Tengu easily because of that back in 2012? No, dude, I don't think it, it counts for that much. I doubt they had much done in the first place. And that's still nothing compa compared to doing all the voice acting work for absolutely every part of the personal story in the dungeons and all the armors and stuff. It seems like most people, by the way, are happy with not being able to play the original personal story on a Tengu, but they don't like the idea of not having armors and outfits and stuff. Like, that's what r really people get off on on Guild Wars 2, and, and to lose that would be a big mistake. Ah. <sighs> Akeldar says you can always save the marble and toss the rest away. Well, yeah, I, I definitely I will keep it, and that's the cool part. It is the cool part, but it's just going to stand there with nothing on top of it. No, I'll buy an hourglass to put on top. It won't. It won't have that authentic. Oh, this was in the hands of NCSoft once style, you know, thing. I feel so bad. I was slowly building a really cool collection of stuff too. I've got the sword, the Coward Bog sword, like that. I had some little bits of merch um, from when I went to a press event for Heart of Thorns. Oh. Yeah, I think they probably did start it, but starting working on the Tengu uh, happens long before any assets manifest, let alone assets that are still worth something four years later, or five, six years later by the time that this proposed expansion comes out. Anyway... Well, here we go, guys. So we are now in what you'll notice is the town for Elona. Um, wow, for Corner. So the town before was Camadan, Jewel of Istan. Uh, now we have we have the Sons of Spanktree. Oh, by the way, uh, just so that people know, there was a bit of crazy news that happened actually in Guild Wars One. Gail Gray's account got hacked, and someone was stood here in Camadan, Jewel of Istan, on her account. Um, uh, basically trolling and, and, and doing all this stuff. Uh, I've just realised that's two different streams in a row now that I've smashed something and had glass near me. Didn't we smash something accidentally in another stream? What was wrong with me? Yeah, uh, it was crazy. It was huge news. Somebody whispered me, like, right as it started happening in Guild Wars 2, talking about it. Again, this is why I would love a global friends list between both games. Um, but they whispered me straight away in Guild Wars 2, and I tweeted it out, and I was like, wow, I can't believe this is going on. And nobody seemed interested at all. You know, like, I, when I throw out a tweet, I expect a general amount of response, right? Like, just based on the audience size and how people are feeling. But, like, that barely got any murmurings. However, I woke up, like, 15 hours later the next morning, and it had proper exploded. Everyone was talking about it. The way that the guy did it was uh, he socially engineered his way into the account by basically claiming he was Gale. Again and again and again, supposedly. And, and eventually he found uh, someone who just said, hey, all right, here you go, here's your account. Uh, without verifying anything, without verifying it was a GM account or any of that stuff. And so Gale's like unique mini pets and stuff. They were trying to start the Halloween event early. It was all, it was all pretty crazy. WP, stay away from glass from now on. Yeah, I, I need just all plastic cups, right? I can't believe it. Make an art installation where you uh, glue all the things that you've broken so far and call it WP Ryzen. This thing shattered into about a million tiny shards of glass, though. I don't think it's going to be a problem. And the sand as well. It's an hourglass, so there's sand all over the floor, like red sand. 
Oh, what? Hate, hate, hate. All right, fine. Let's continue with the story. So let's talk to Lena. So we have, uh, sorry, sorry. So we have a sanctuary now. Yay! Right in the caves, hidden behind a village of Ronjok. Ronjok could get in a lot of trouble if it finds out it's harboring Sunspears. Um, and we are technically ascended now. We can visit the realms of the gods and stuff, funnily enough. Uh, carved as a shrine to Melandru in ancient times, this red-rocked vault was once used as cistern by the Cornans to contain Elona's floodwaters. When that enterprise failed, the sanctuary was walled off and forgotten, inhabited only by things that like to live in the dark. Now it serves as a secret refuge for the Sunspears. I love that description, man. Oh, it's like this old, like, walled off tomb place. Like this. Oh, my God. It's so cool. Can you imagine this represented in Guild Wars 2, right? Like red rock canyons. You know, like the Burnisher Quarry in Heart of Thorns. You know, a bit like Dry Top looks like, but specifically the Burnisher Quarry, if you guys don't know. Remember in Heart of Thorns, there's that mission where you're running through all these red rocked canyons uh, with the aspect of glint and you're chasing foul lane. Do you remember that? Or you're running away from foul lane. You remember that and you get the really super powered skills that you get later in an adventure and stuff. That part of Heart of Thorns. And you're weaving through those beautiful red canyons. That's known as the Burnisher Quarry and you can go there in the open world map once you've got ley line gliding. It's, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful areas of Heart of Thorns. I had an active desktop, like a moving screenshot wallpaper of the day-night cycle there. It's beautiful. Can you imagine that th th this being portrayed with those kinds of assets? And like really feels super hot and there's nice beautiful little shady areas. And you've got like all the, the waters being rendered better and you can even drop down and take a swim. I used to be so excited about swimming in Guild Wars 2. Namely because in Kryta in Guild Wars 1 there were these fucking crazy looking shark drake things swimming around in water all the time. And they looked badass and I always wanted to go swim with them. And it was so exciting in Guild Wars 2 because it was like wow rangers can get drakes as pets now. And you could swim to... All things that long have ceased to be exciting to me, I guess. Did you see the, the cat easter egg? I did, yeah. I don't know what it's about. I haven't looked into it too much, but yeah. Alright, so we've got Lone Eye with a lovely revealing armor here. <clears throat> uh, this place isn't a palace. But at least, uh, sorry, oh, hold on, hold on, let's, let's get close. All right, so she says, This place isn't a palace, but at least we're safely hidden from Varish's forces. We've set up a command post in the northern end where you can confer with your allies. With all of the events of the past few days, Cormir missing and now being hunted by the Cornans, we'll need a strong new leader to guide us. It's only natural that you've ascended to this position. We must tend to the wounded now, but I've heard Narashia has returned with words of Koss's fate. So much to do. All right, so we've heard about what happened to Koss. And we just leveled, which is super important. I don't know how we're going to save costs. This is going to be really hard. What should I do more? I I'm going to go more motivation just because I'm terrified that we're not going to be able to make it. Uh, now, what was Talcora? She was smiting, right? What does she have? Defender Zeals. Whenever a target foe hits with an attack, you gain two energy. Are you serious? You guys voted on this? This? Wow, Jerry. Whole year, man. Congrats, dudes. Oh, defenders, ugh. Guys, why did you do this to me? All right, so she is pretty much purely smiting, but she's got a bit of divine in there. Um, I'm going to bump up the divine because... Uh, so what divine favor does is it means every ability she uses heals for a small amount and then whatever the effect of the skill is. So if I put her divine favor up, then that helps. Uh, for Dunkoro... I guess I should do smiting a bit more. Well, I can do both. Beautiful. Uh, for Susuke, we're going to bump the fire and start nuking a bit harder and give him some more energy so he can do it for longer. And then for Milani, I guess that's pretty basic as well. Scythe and mysticism. Myself, I think I should add the Sons of a Rebirth signal or something. Oh no, what we've got? There's nothing to fear already. Why haven't I been running this? I should run this. A 15 energy, though. Ugh. The thing with, with Paragon, guys, is you have very little energy, but the more allies you have, the more energy you get. So, uh... So, what is this? This is for four seconds, plus one second for every two ranks in leadership. This is a good example of really obnoxiously 
poorly worded and weird affected Guild Wars 1 skills, by the way. I'm not surprised we don't have stuff like this in Guild Wars 2. So basically, if I had 8 leadership, this would, this would run for 8 seconds. And during that time, all party members take 35% less damage, and then at the end, everyone gets healed for 60 health. Do you know what? I am going to do that. I am going to run this. And it might be really costly on the energy, but it's smarter than some of these refrains, which I haven't really been able to use. So, here we go. I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is that Narashi found Koss. Unfortunately, he's been taken prisoner by the Cornans. Dun dun dun! We need to get him back. He had made a deal with a friendly Corsair captain, Margaret the Sly, and we need her ship to get our wounded back to Istan. That means we need Koss. Go meet Narashi in the Arjok Ward and devise a plan for breaking Koss out. So, the, yeah, you read that right. Okay, this is, uh, this is something I wish Guild Wars 1 did a bit better. Do you guys remember why we're here in Corner? One of the reasons we have good cause to fight the Cornans is because they were funding Corsairs to attack our lands. And who are we relying on to get home safely now? The Corsairs. It's very cool. Have a good night, Will Hawkins. Oh, no, you're off to work, not to bed. Uh, then get go for the eyes. Yeah, go for the eyes is a great point, yeah. What was that? That was command, wasn't it? I don't have any single command skill? Inside motivation mysticism. I don't have a single command skill. That can't be, that cannot be right. I'm looking at this wrong, aren't I? If I ding that. I don't have a single command skill. That was so stupid, us, us ranking command before then. Alright, okay, this is not going to be too easy then, guys. Uh, okay, and then we've also got some other stuff going on. So, do you have everything you need? Are you sure? Corner patrols are worse in foul weather. Are you absolutely certain? So, the command post. So, though we are battered, we are not broken. So as long as you, ha we have you to lead us. At the back of the Sunsmith Sanctuary is an area called the Command Post. This is where you can meet with your squad to discuss battle tactics and strategies. It also links to underground passages to other areas of corner, so we can move about undetected by Varish. Dunkoro is waiting in the Command Post. No doubt he has some uh, plans on how we should proceed. So, you know how I ranted and raved about how awesome Guild Wars 2's most recent patch was? Because they've done floating timeline maps and because they've got the ability to phase dialogue, right? And what these two things mean is that in open world areas like this, I could meet other players here. There could be other people wandering around. They're not because the game's dying, but you know. Um, wow, I suddenly felt really lonely there. All lonely here in Alona, this area. I remember when this used to be absolutely rampacked. Um, you know how I ran into Raven about that? Guild Wars 1 couldn't do that. So what they've done instead is they've got this area called the Command Post, which is kind of like an explorable area. Um, but it changes depending on what part of the plot you're at. Different NPCs will be here talking about different things. Different quests will be available. And you can actually build it up to get lots of vendors and things as well. In an ideal world, you wouldn't need a command post. All this stuff would just happen in the sanctuary itself. But again, because they can't phase or anything, they had to do it as a separate little instance, right? So that, that's, that's what this is. This is the command post. This is just sort of an extension to the same, uh, you know, uh, temple complex we were looking at before. So here we got a smuggler. And he's the basic merchant for us. So as we complete quests here we get corn and coins and we can use those for these. A bit like the commendations we were getting before. Um, and what you might notice here okay. Uh, and now another thing that the, the, the Guild Wars 1 devs kind of had to play with and that was a bit upsetting is now that we're in this instance we've got, if we wander over here, we've got Dunkoro, see? Dunkoro is waiting for us, he wants to talk to us, blah blah blah. You know, technically I guess we shouldn't have a party right now. But the thing is, we can add Dunkoro as a hero as well. And so he's kind of been doubled up. So now we've got this guy with us, who is basically Dunkoro, but he's inexplicably called the Sunspear Monk. <laughs> to like preserve it. Like, so this is one of those weird things, okay? And he'll talk like Dunkoro talks and blah, blah, blah. And the same thing's happened here with uh, Meloni as well, by the way, who's a Sunspit Dervish, because there'll be another copy of, of Meloni out here somewhere. So anyway. Oh. So let's see. Dunkoro. You know what I've said about sticking to the plan? When the situation changes, get a new plan. All right. Uh, to stand a chance against Varish's forces, we have to regain our strength. That means rescuing our Sunspit brothers and sisters... Uh, scattered throughout hostile territory. 
Narashi, our scout, has discovered a small company of corn and guards escorting a band of captured sun spears. So here's the plan. We ambush these guards before they reach the, sun spear, the, the sunward marches and rescue our captured brethren. If we will, there'll be... Uh, uh, sorry, if we wait, there will be too many to fight. As it is, we'll be outnumbered. With Sun Spears, we can handle it. So that's the new plan. Hit them fast and hit them hard. Let's get moving. So, so yeah, remember, Dunquari's our tactician. He's the guy with the plan. He, he's he been the uh, main advisor to Cormier over the years. I love it when a plan comes together. Okay? So, so that's the primary quest. Here we've got Maloney as well. Come on, get Zed already so we can vote to give him second wind. Oh, God. Uh, Melandry blesses my steps, but my heart belongs to Corner. I'm a dervish of the Sun Spears, and I know that this land better than anyone. Uh, those who threaten my country, like Varish, Osser, and her minions, shall regret doing so. I think we read that dialogue before. But yeah, so Melandry's going to become a bit more important now, because we're in her homeland. She's not from Istan, like many of us. Um, and so here you'll see you've got a bunch of different signposts, right? The Sunward Marches, the Sanctuary back there. Uh, you got Churai's procession. Ooh, Churai. Who remembers Churai, guys? Churai Osa. Yep. It's called that for a very good reason, but we'll get to that later. Hopefully, we'll get Zed by the Oh, I keep looking back there and seeing this damn smashed hourglass. I feel awful. I don't just hate that I've lost the hourglass, but I hate that I look like or feel like, like an irresponsible arsehole that's broken this wonderful gift someone's given me. Do you know what I mean? Oh. Feels so bad. Anyway, yeah, you got these traders and stuff. We'll get more quests that build this up. I think we should have access to other quests already, but I don't really see them, so whatever. All right, here we go. That sound was the doors opening, which I don't think you'd ever really easily be able to see, but hey. Okay, so. What have we got here? Let's get our bounty first, shall we? So these are the Sunward Marches. These are the northern areas. We'll be seeing a, a fair bit of these as we try to get home soon. But here's a wandering priest. Uh, you've been an outlaw here in Corner, Sunspear. Um, if you would show yourself a true friend of the Corner people, you might rally their support. My current duty is to provide the God's blessing to those who keep Corner safe by hunting e uh, beasts such as the Tatuka and the Howler. If you want to prove yourself, Aid us in protecting these people. Oh my god, I just realized something. Uh, a while ago, a developer, a Guild Wars 2 dev, mentioned um, that they were making some enemy varieties that were based on Guild Wars 1 models. Do you remember that was that kind of cryptic message in one of the streams? It was a while back. I think it was when they were doing the press stuff for Wing 2. Do you guys remember? And it was around that time... Ah. Here we got a bunch of magicals. And it was around that time that uh, we also... Oh my god, see, look, the magicals are hitting us that hard. Even. Oh, hold on. There we go, let's turn that down. Even when I had. There's nothing to fear up, that's crazy. Uh, around that time, we started Nightfall. And I remember telling you guys in one of the early streams, oh, I wonder if they're like Nightfall beasts that they're making. How cool would that be? But now we know what they were. They were the Jade Armors and the Massar. That's what they were making. That's kind of cool, right? So now we know. I wonder how many things like teacups his grandmother might have given him. WP is broken. Irreplaceable family history. And he cares about an hourglass. Actually, I've never broken a teacup or anything like that in my life. I've never been gifted teacups. <laughs> it's not a, a gift I think I'd appreciate very much. Not unless it had like a game or, or a movie franchise or something plastered over it in a nice tacky way that I would then obviously appreciate. <laughs> He's taking the beat in here. Buffer up. I'm going to keep Maloney up here. Her thing. Just so that I can watch her. Strength of Honor. And put it back on when I need to. So, uh, so there is a, a Guild Wars 1 YouTuber I started watching recently, guys. Uh, and I may as well plug him. I started in Guild Wars 1, so obviously anyone who's there still these days, I think deserves some attention and deserves some uh, some support. Uh, basically, he posts pretty much everything he ever does on the Guild Wars 1 subreddit. 
And you might think that's tacky or whatever and blah, blah, blah. But the, the truth is there's just not much content for Guild Wars 1 anyway. So uh, people seem to appreciate it. But what the guy does is skill reviews. It's a really interesting idea. Um, where basically you'll just have an in-depth look at every sing at an individual Guild Wars 1 skill. Uh, it's kind of something you see on the Hearthstone scene for Hearthstone content creators. Where they'll do a video on one specific card. And whether it's good, whether it's bad, the situations it's good. Show some highlights of it in an action. That's basically what he does, but for Guild Wars 1 skills. Which works, because Guild Wars 1 skills, you know, it's basically a, a TCG. So, uh, so yeah, it, it's actually kind of interesting. and He can get a lot of conversation out of each skill as well. Like, he'll pick a random skill and can talk for like 40 minutes about it. Showing off all the combos and all kinds of stuff. It's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, they're just called Guild Wars 1 skill reviews. And it's nice to see a content creator doing stuff for Guild Wars 1. Corn and Phalanx. Give your feet a rest. The captain needs a moment in the shade. Alright. So, what have we got? We've got a big group over there. Look, we've got some Sunspear friends over there, which is cool. Uh, we've got two scouts. And we've got two scouts. So, how about we try and pull these two scouts first? So, let's, let's do this. There we go. He can cast Mage Hunter's Strike. I don't mind that. Except contemplation of purity. What's wrong with contemplation of purity? How many of such teacups do I have? I don't have any teacups. I started drinking a bit more tea last year or earlier this year. I did start drinking a bit more tea. But I'm still not a massive fan of it. Oh, these guys are running in. Are they reporting our position to them? Shall we wait and see what happens if they patrol back out? I hope they do. If not, that phalanx is the captain, maybe? Maybe he's not. He's the nearest to the shade. We might be able to deal with him. Let's try and pull just one. Okay, ready? Now requesting a skill review video on Rise. Well, I basically did that. It's funny because I would love it to I'd love to be able to do that for Guild Wars 2. I think that's a really cool idea for Guild Wars 2. And I'm sure if I sat down for a couple of days and really thought about all the different ways you could produce that content, it might work. Um, but skills in Guild Wars 2 just, it's just... I feel like it doesn't quite work. I feel like it's not quite the same. And people wouldn't be very interested in it. Is Contemplation of Purity even a good skill? I remember using Contemplation of Purity a lot. Come on, Dunk Pop Meloni. Don't die. Keep in there. Guys, we're actually doing pretty good. We do a lot of damage. Like, a lot of damage. It's it's a weird, very aggressive makeup we've got here. Because we are underleveled. And we are understaffed. But we're killing stuff um, at sort of a normal speed. And you guys might think, oh, this all looks perfectly normal. But it's not, right? Like, if, if you had a team full of level 15 dudes and, uh, and, and you're fighting these packs of 20, generally speaking, if these were all henchies, we'd be killing them at the same time, at the same speed. So the way that you voted, you have made some horrible decisions, guys. But it's, it's kind of balanced in a, in a weird way here. All right, so anyway, these guys are happy. The Corn and Phalanx said, did you hear that? We're being followed. Move the prisoners to the back and prepare for attack. And then uh, the Sunspear says, Thanks to gods, I, I thought my only means of freedom would be the chopping block. And Zura says, We were on our way to the safe point when these Cornans found us. We'll meet you at the rendezvous point. And Saoosha says, Let's get out of here before more Cornans arrive. So there you go. I swear, the humans here that we're interacting with feel more aggressive like killing each other and chopping block stuff than we've ever seen the char in Guild Wars 2 be to each other. Is that just me? I mean, the char were vaguely aggressive in early personal story steps, but since then they haven't been. Alright, here we go. Well done feeding those sun spears. Freeing, feeding, wow. Freeing those sun spears. You'd especially well, wooden spear Tato. Keep flexibility in mind the next time you assault a large group. And remember the value of, uh, of patience too. Dunkoro always says a little patience goes a long way. Our rescued brethren and allies 
New allies will help us resupply behind enemy lines, and that means I can make sure you can be rewarded for the risks you took today. Those sun spears you rescued have set up shop in the command post. You can check in with them at any time. Thanks. I guess that was the side quest then. All right, so let's do uh, let's do the Great Escape then. Let's open our quest log. Uh, oh, the command post. So we need to complete building the base, the interrogation, and building the base, the meeting. Are these quests we get from elsewhere in here? I don't think they are. Hey, look, another player! Sup, bro? It's weird not being able to, like, mouse over his AP or something. And be like, oh, you're good or you're bad. <laughs> I don't know, that's interesting. Hello. Uh, if the next expansion doesn't feature a race, it will most likely need to have a class to be a selling point. What class? I think if it doesn't have a race, I, I, am, I am absolutely positive that it will not have a new class, guys. I'm absolutely positive it will not have a new class. And as much as all the veterans are sitting there saying, oh, because yeah, elite specializations are enough. And as much as the veterans are sitting there saying, oh, you don't need a race to replace it or whatever, I think it will hurt the sales. I really think it's going to hurt the sales. Uh, they've got a lot longer to make the next expansion, but I, I, I don't know. Uh, it's going to be interesting. They this, they're, they're not going to have a race, potentially. Uh, or well, there's a, there's a good chance um, they they're not gonna have legendary. The other, you, do you know what? I I feel like I'm gonna we're gonna live in a bizarre world where they genuinely do try to sell the next expansion uh, on legendaries again. I think that's gonna be crazy. Um, they're not gonna have, and then there's a bunch of like other baseline things that the next expansion can't market either. It can't market. Well, no, it can market new guild halls. That's fine. It can do that. But there's a lot of, like, new systems that Heart of Thorns drops that they could put on the release page. The next expansion could have ten times the content, but there won't be so many new, like, novel ideas. And I'm really scared that that will hurt the sales of it. I'm scared that ArenaNet are doomed, basically. That They did, they made a, a bunch of right decisions, but just didn't have the content to support it for Heart of Thorns. So it looks lackluster. And I'm really scared that the next expansion is actually going to be really fucking awesome. And it's going to be loads of content. It's going to be really good. But because on paper it doesn't look like a bunch of new shit's been added. It's just a high quantity amount of shit. Uh, it also won't sell really well. Like, I'm really worried. I don't know. And I think that would be a, a miserable world to live in. Anyway. I received word that Narashi has captured a corner scout and is holding him on the Marga Coast. Right now, we must gather as much intelligence on our enemies as possible. What they know about us and what they know of our operations. I need you to interrogate Narashi's captured scout and learn what the Kornan army knows. Are you up for this? Absolutely. Okay. So time to do some interrogating. You guys ready to get your uh, knuckles a bit bloody? So this is back on the Marga Coast. And what we're going to do is we're going to... You, you might be tempted here to go back to Yolen Haven, but we're going to go out of Ronjok because I think going through Ronjok might be a bit... Yeah, I don't know. It's just... It's going gonna, it's gonna to be weird. Um, maybe maybe I'm, I'm, I'm wrong, right? Like, they, if they've got two years... Uh, all right. So, so they said that expansions are going to start coming out faster. It took them about four years to do the first. So we're looking at a two to three year cycle for the next one. Let's say it's two. I think two is the sweet spot. Um, they're making the next expansion for two years. Uh, two years, all the new elite specializations could potentially be way better. They've got more time, not just to develop, design them and not make horrible, clunky, stupid messes like the Tempest, but they can actually also uh, implement a lot more engine features to allow totally new types of skills to exist, like cascading skills and stuff we had before and whatever. Um, so these can all be a lot more explorative and, and, and interesting. So the elite specializations for the next expansion could be a lot stronger. They can market a lot more maps. They can say, hey, look, we've actually got loads more stuff. They can... I don't think you can easily market that the personal story is going to be longer or, or whatever. I think that's going to have to be something that speaks for itself once it's gone out and people will watch reviews to, to figure out whether they're buying the game. Like, I know that there are a huge amount of people that waited for my Heart of Thorns story review before they bought the game. There's no way you can really market the quality of the story because you're just going to tell people it's good, obviously, and then that's it. Uh, we'll look at those other guys' quests in a second. Let's just keep going. Um, what else can they do? They can... Uh, uh, another two guild halls, maybe? Two? What do you guys think? Two guild halls? Four guild halls? Probably two. Um, there's no need to go much more crazy than that. 
Maybe they'll add, maybe maybe with the maps, what they could do is add two regions. Add the Isles of Janthir and add the Crystal Desert, right? Like, so it's like, hey, Heart of Thorns only gave you the jungle. We're giving you three regions or, or whatever the balls, you know, and then all of a sudden that drives home to people a bit more how much more expansive this expansion is. Um, legendaries, they can't touch with a 10-foot pole. If they do, if they try to, you're going to get shit like people saying, don't pre-purchase Heart of Thorns, that thread again kind of thing, or don't pre-purchase cow. Uh, no class, none of that revenant like marketing can exist again. And if it's no race as well, then there's nothing to replace that. So that's just a loss, right? Like on paper, people won't view the next expansion as good. When you when you view it, it's just a list form of new features added to the game, which is what a lot of potential consumers will do, unfortunately. Anyway, we're under the shade here, uh, and Narashi speaking to us. And she says, there you are, wooden potato. I'm just in time. I was afraid I'd be forced to sully my blade on this prisoner's throat. He's been making quite the ruckus. So this guy is the captured scout, Ketur. I'll tell you, anything I want. Uh, anything you want. <laughs> just whatever you do. Don't put me... Don't hurt me. I'm allergic to pain. <laughs> Alright, cool. Alright, Narashi, what are we doing with this guy? We must move carefully. There are corn and patrols everywhere. We lucked out with this one, wooden potato. I caught him a long ways away from his company for snooping around an overturned wagon searching for loot. Sadly for him, the only thing he found was the blade of my knife pressed against his throat. I think I've ruffled his feathers. No, I didn't read it all. Anyway, it was probably just go talk to him. Oh. Please, don't let that woman hurt me. I'll tell you everything. I know, uh, just keep her and that dagger away from me. I love how he's like super heavy armored and it's really hard to imagine a knife being pressed his throat. Oh, good shout. UK Kaza says something like the Underworld. That is, yeah, that's a great thing they could market the next expansion on. Fissure of Woe and Underworld raids added day one. That kind of thing. Yeah. All right. That would sell a lot of copies. That would shift a lot of copies. You're absolutely right about that. Oh, and do you know what's really cool as well? You guys might remember before Heart of Thorns came out, they, they were talking about raids. And I, I did like a Tyria 3D video where we saw that they, they were basically making the Fissure of Woe. Do you guys remember that? Um, it, it, there was a development version of it for Guild Wars 2. And we did a lot of discussion. There was the Temple of Balthazar in the jungles. So people thought, oh, maybe, maybe through the P Temple of Balthazar we'll end up going into the Fissure of Woe. That'll be the first raid, blah, blah, blah. It never ended up being the first raid. We ended up getting the Forsaken Thicket, blah, blah, blah. But do you know what's actually really cool? As disappointing as that is, that there was no Fissure of Way with Heart of Thorns. What's, what's cool now is ArenaNet have learned even better what makes raids good now. And have tuned things even better. And understand the balance and the capabilities of the audience and stuff even better. And there are more mechanics and boss types and functions and things that they can do. So so the Fissure of Way, basically the more delayed it is before that Fissure of Way or Underworld content goes in, the better it's going to be, right? The potential Fissure of Way that they could have cranked out with Heart of Thorns will be so much worse than the one that we get with Cow, right? Or, or whatever. Cogs of War. Welcome to the stream. Welcome, welcome. Got a lot of people turning up. It's nice to see you guys sharing in your love for a uh, good bit of Nightfall. Anyway, all right. Please don't let that woman hurt me. Blah, blah, blah. What are you doing out here? Okay, let's learn a bit about the Cornyn's patrols, shall we, guys? He says, uh, My unit received reports that a group of peasants was tending to injured sun spears. Uh-oh, so they know about us at Runjok. We went to investigate, but we found the sun spears had all died of their wounds. We arrested the peasants for aiding and abetting the enemy. Oh, so this wasn't us at Runjok? My company sent me to the garrison to get instructions on what to do with the traitors. Along the way, I saw an overturned wagon, and I decided to investigate. While I was rummaging, that ruffian of yours jumped me with her knife drawn. She threatened to kill me if I made a peep. Okay, how many men were in your unit? We're just a small scout patrol, including me. There are eight of us. That's, that's small, is it? Uh, where is your unit now? They're just north of here, but back where I left them, holding the prisoners. What, why do you want to know? You, you're not going to kill them, are you? Let's talk about something else. Uh, have you seen any other Sunspears? That group was the only one. I heard that most who survived the battle had been captured or found dead. Those still alive are being held in the garrisons. The more important ones end up in bot... Uh, uh, Bo Bokos Prison, sorry, Bokos Prison. That's all I know. Okay, so Bokos Prison, guys, is actually back in the capital. So anyone who's been caught, and is in, it's actually this island here, it's like an Alcatraz-style island. Uh, anyone who's been caught uh, and is there, we're basically never going to be able to free, right? I wonder who these important prisoners might be. 
I don't have any more questions. I answered all your questions. Please don't hurt me. All right, we're going to go kill your friends now, bud. All right, Narashi. All right, you wooden potato. You'd better go rescue those captured pe uh, peasants. Stay alert. That scout might have fed you bait. Uh, what do you want me to do with this guy? So we get to choose. What do you want, guys? Do we kill him? He's useless to us now. Or I'll blindfold him, take him out into the wilderness, and set him free. By the time he makes it back to his unit, we'll be long gone. So what one do we choose to do? I like this. Little moments like this. Come on. Why doesn't Guild Wars 2 do this? Uh, first person to type uh, 89 and then the answer, kill or blindfold, you get to choose. There you go, Twitch. How do we play this out? Ice Shade said, can we join you for group instances? Uh, unlikely. I kind of like what we're doing with the heroes right now and the, the, the thingy. Oh, 89 free came a split second before an 89 kill. All right, stinky sardines. You managed to save our life from calamari there. So we're going to blindfold him. We're going to take him out into the wilderness and set him free. By the time he uh, makes it back, we'll be long gone. She says, consider it done. May the blood of our enemies be spilled this day. <laughs> uh, find the remainder of the scout, scout unit and free the prisoners, Winspitato. I'll take care of this one. No, don't leave me with that woman. She has murder in her eyes. And they're buggering off. All right. So we want to go a bit north, as he explained. And we're going to kill all of his friends. Because that's just what you do. 69 shag. <laughs> Very funny. Oh, Somehow that just reminded me of the hourglass, and I'm sad again. <sighs> Alright, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? We got, so, eight people to fight. There's a bowman over there. There's some people here. So, there's a pack of five, and then there's three sort of stood around. Let's see what we got, shall we? Just hopefully they don't pin us down too hard with crossfire. Oh god, they really hurt. Yeah, oh my god, I love running with Susuke. Look at the fire. This is so good. That's like a perfect meter shower there. Remember guys, there's no target cap in Guild Wars 1. It's one of those things that makes the combat in PvE feel so much more juicy than Guild Wars 2's PvE combat for general open world stuff. There's no target cap. So these are some seriously raunchy hits from the, this early here. How come you associate 69 with Hourglass? I'm curious. Well, I'll let you guess on that one. I think maybe uh, maybe you can figure it out. Like sands through the Hourglass are the days of our lives. <laughs> Thank you for freeing us. The guards were discussing new and painful ways to kill us before you arrived. We were arrested for helping injured Sun Spears. We don't know. We didn't know that they were outlaws. Uh, we're Sun Spears too, bro. By slaughtering the guards and breaking us free from shackles, our saviors have made outlaws of us all. Don't be so quick to thank them. That's true. He's got a point. We've put them in an even harder dilemma now. Well, bro, you were sort of an outlaw already. You were getting killed. I'm sorry for saving your life. He doesn't have a good point. I hate that guy. He sucks. Oh, what does he say if we talk to him? Uh, once a prisoner to my own people, I am now shackled by the Sun Spears. You may think you've liberated me, but having been freed by the enemy of Corner, I too am an outcast, a renegade. Even an outcast needs to eat, however. Part with some of your gold, and I will unlock the power of the runes. Your armor will be imbued with sacred characters that crackle with the energies of runic power. That's weird dialogue. Oh, maybe it's not weird. I guess he's going to become a rune trader. Back home. In the command post. He's gonna, he, he's, he's got to live with us now. That's the idea, I guess. These people have to be at the command post because they've got nowhere else to go. I thought I'd be locked away in a garrison prison forever. Thank you for rescuing me. I give you my word. I'll help you and your friends in any way I can. Your actions have proven who the protectors of the common people truly are. That guy's appreciative, at least. The Sun Spears have been welcome here for decades. My, how times have changed. I was arrested simply for helping a wounded one. My eyes are open now, friend. Changes must be made in corner. Or none will live free. Long have I tamed, trained creatures vivid and bizarre. If you require my services, I swear them to you until this land is safe. So she's one of those Beastmaster NPCs. I can't really remember how she functions. 
can't, can't quite remember what happened there. It's like if you've unlocked the pet before, then you can always grab them back from there. Shards of War speed clear was your life. I actually never really did Shards of War speed clear. I never really cared about the Bone Dragon stuff. That was what you got from that one, right? I used to do a lot of Viteers, keg farming and stuff. Oh. Domain of Anguish was really my, my, my area. I did other areas, but DOA for like... Small dedicated farms. I used to uh, four-man the whole uh, the glue. I, I, you couldn't really do Stygian Veil. Vale. I've seen videos of tricks that people do using Guild Wars 2, Guild Wars 1 toolbox and stuff now, um, which is basically hacky, but the devs let you do it, um, and they don't sort of moderate it. Uh, I've seen people do methods in Stygian Veil vale now that are incredible to me and would have blown my mind way back when. Uh, and maybe opened it up, but I used to I used to go gloom foundry city and then and then leave it there That was my farm with with one other player I used to do it at first and then I could do it all on my own with just multiple accounts and heroes Your neighbors don't know you're a youtuber do they uh, hearing those voices must be equally hilarious and scary <laughs> Yeah, I think probably I think my uh, neighbors smoke an awful lot of weed as well So the thought that they hear these voices coming through while they're high <laughs> um, uh, let's not do that yet. We'll we'll look at that later, I guess. That's a side quest, but it's a cool one to do with the heroes. So many dead Tengu. Oh, feather farming. Uh -huh. So there we go. We've escorted them back. This place is hidden well. I never knew of its existence. Let's hope that means the military doesn't know about it either. <clears throat> I'm sure it's safer in here than out in the open. Now that we're outlaws, there's no place safe for us. Dude, do you want to bugger off? Christ. Uh, Shade says ArenaNet killed every sort of good farming method to date except Auric Basin. What I really want ArenaNet to do, I, lo I agree in principle with what they've done. Um, and that's that, and and that's with the bonus, uh, the 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 bonus material system, I, the the bonus map reward system. I think that's really good. I think they just need to tweak it to be a bit more favourable. Right now, it only really affects player populations and farming ideas and stuff, and sort of gives you that cool experience um, when it's frost gorge. I think that's like it. And sometimes if it's uh, a good rotation on uh, South Sun. But generally, people don't do it very much, and they don't care about it. I would love to see ArenaNet tweak it just that bit better, diminish the rewards elsewhere, buff those up just a little bit more, swing the balance ever so slightly. Because what I would love to see is is to log into Guild Wars 2, open the LFG panel, and see under open world squads, you know, five or six different big squads filled with different people saying, all right, guys, look, this is the week. We're all in Kershaw, blah, 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 blah. And then and then next week, it's a different map. And you get to meet these communities and hang out in these maps. Because that's varied content, right? That's the, There's more than enough stuff to, to have a whole open world map to farm for, for a week before you move to a totally different one. I think that's good. I, I think people don't really get burned out by that. But it's just gotta, they've just got to improve it ever so slightly. I would say, though, that the game's really impressive with LFG at the moment. Last night, I had a really awesome, awesome experience. Um, the game feels so populated, guys. Like, honestly, Guild Wars 2, it feels so popular at the moment. Here was my experience, right? I logged in, and I did... Uh, it wasn't that close to reset, I believe, when this was happening. I logged in, and I did daily rec daily recommended fractals and T4 fractals. Uh, that was, like, three different trips to LFG. Every single time, I would just go to LFG. All right, daily recommended, it would fill instantly. And then daily T4, and then a couple of people leave. Daily T4 again. It fills instantly. Fucking instantly, all right? Then did some of the current event stuff with the Bloodstone things. Look at LFG. Massive squads. People grouping together. Finding the different um, uh, Bloodstone cr crazed creatures all over the place. Uh, do some PvP. Instant Q pop. It's, it's, just, it's just awesome when you... when No matter what you do in the game. You just wander here, here, here or here to these various places. And it's like, shit, there's, there's people here. There's people doing it. People are running the dry tops. People are running the silver waste. You go to randomly to Auric Basin and there's a bunch of people doing the meta there. Or you go to... It's really cool. And the Bloodstone uh, crazed monsters and stuff ended up uh, getting me onto Guild Wars 2 Timer. Uh, which is such a good website these days. So, so good. 
And um, it, it's just awesome. It's so cool. It, it really feels like people are everywhere. And I like that a lot. I've got something else to say to you guys about that as well in a second. Um, so, the information you extracted from the scout has pro already proven worthwhile. Those rescued peasants have useful skills. One of them is a master of dyes, another is an animal tamer. The last one I'm not so sure about. It is an extremely skilled rune enchanter, but seems reluctant to be here or get involved with our cause. All of those you rescued have set up tents in the command post. Check in with them any time if you need their services. See, Guild Wars 1 has always fascinated me, and it feels like in some ways it's designed. Like, okay, we just unlocked a rune trader. That's all well and good, but it's a fucking useless idea, considering I could at any point have just waypointed back to Kamadan and got a rune from there. So it's, it, it's weird that they let you do this. And it's always been interesting for me, even back in Prophecies, to think Guild Wars feels like, you know, like right now we're supposed to be stranded in corner. And yet what they do is they just let you waypoint back whenever the hell you want, even though the story shouldn't let you. There's an arc in Prophecies as well that's very similar, which is where you're in the Crystal Desert. You're supposed to be excluded from the outside world. And stuff's going on there, but you're separate and you don't know what the fuck it is. And you're, you're stuck there until eventually you ascend a new leap. But you can just waypoint away. It's, I, it's always fascinated me, the idea of this game that uh, they let you map travel, but only within regions until the story permits you to do it elsewhere. And then when you complete the story, you can go everywhere you want. And that's like the big unlock, and that's the big perk of completing the game. I've always loved that idea, but this is one of those things again where it's like, oh, that's restrictive design, and uh, I don't know. Apparently, that's not fun. I think that'd be really fun, though, because then I'd feel really rewarded by getting this rune trader here, you know? And I'd care about getting more, and you know, they're this renewable ideas, right? Like every time you go to a new region, all right, who's the traders? Where do I go? Blah, blah, blah. That'd be fucking cool. Maybe it's just me, though. Um, so yeah. Kind of a useless concept for quest and stuff. All right, uh, I do, I do like getting the XP here. So let's go out and do that other quest from Runjok here that required Milani. So, why would there be a quest that requires a Milani? Well, we shall see. Alright, talking about Guild Wars 2 player population. Um, I've got some other stuff to talk to you guys about. Those who follow Wooden Potatoes 2, uh, anyone in the stream right now, um, if you enjoy these streams, I put them up wholesale, every one we do, or almost every single one we do, uh, onto Wooden Potatoes 2, uh, where they will be forevermore. You can look at any upload Wooden Potatoes 2 ever does by either subscribing to that channel, or you can just go to my main channel, Wooden Potatoes, on YouTube, and if you just look at the, the actual channel page, um, it's got sections there for visual word and the live streams and blah, 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 and, and so on. So you'll see all this stuff there. Anyway, uh, if you are sub to Wooden Potatoes 2, you will have noticed I put a video on that channel uh, yesterday that has nothing to do, th th that isn't a stream VOD. Um, and what that video is, is I'm looking for someone, uh, I mentioned at the end of yesterday's stream, I'm looking for someone who can be in the Spud Club as kind of a games master who can set up cool events and PvP tournaments like arena game types and zombie matches and run guild missions and help people with their raid teams and stuff to make the Spud Club a real guild, right? Like I'd love, and in my opinion, there's all the good stuff about being a guild leader without actually having to deal with all the, the, the annoying stuff everyone else has to, like having to maintain player population. Like if you, if you did it with the Spud Club, you'd have basically an infinite stream of, of content. Of people and you it's a nice position to be in so I really wanted to let people know about this So I, I did a SoundCloud post I did a uh, my first one ever by the way. Yeah, I have a SoundCloud now I don't know. It might be nice for longer tweets sometimes um, Did a, a wooden potatoes 2 video and I did and I did it in a paste bin just sort of in text format uh, But one of the things I want to do if we can get that games master running speaking of Guild Wars 2 player population there's an idea I've mentioned on the streams recently where I might go back into Let's Play in Guild Wars 2 and one of the things I'd like to do is on Wooden Potatoes 2 I'd like to do a full immersive exploration of Tyria. So like there would be a Queensdale video and it's no commentary but it's all the beautiful perfectly sound balanced uh, the most exquisite footage I can get like the perfect reshade combination with ICM to clean up the UI as much as possible um, all the sound balance just right and, and leveled out uh, and so that combat doesn't sound too loud, but you still get the footsteps sound effects and stuff. Uh, and it would just be like this hyper immersive, okay, here's what it's like exploring Guild Wars 2. And I'd do a video on Queensdale, and I'd do a video on Kessex, and then a video, in, until eventually we've got the, the, the world covered. And these would just be kind of fun little hobby things I could just throw up. 
Um, and it wouldn't be rushing around doing map completion. It would be steady, you know, really exploring the content, speaking to the NPCs, actually playing it properly. Um, so pe I, I think that would be a nice service, and I think that would be something cool, and that would make me feel better about myself, you know, as cataloging this game. Uh, anyway, one thing I'd love to do to combine all this stuff together, one thing I'd love to do is if we can get a Games Master, I'd love to run an event where we map cap Queensdale with 150 players or 200 players or however many it is who have all made a new character all at once. They're all in that fucking little house there and then they all spread out like wildfire and it's everyone's job to just play the game and level a new character without tomes or anything in Queensdale to get map completion there. And while that event is going on, that's when I do the immersive tour video. So it feels like launch and there's all these people everywhere and, you know, like that perfect, perfect encapsulation of what it's like when you're running around in Guild Wars 2 and it's populated. I would love a video of that. And then we do that for like each map. I think that'd be incredible. Anyway, I, uh, so that's one of the things I, I was thinking of. I think that'd be really, really, really fun. Um, uh, because I, I, I know so many people are chasing that feeling of what it was like at launch. And uh, that would that would sort of grab it in some ways. All right, okay, so let's uh, let's get back to this. All right, so out here we see we've got two guys with exclamation marks. This means two different quests, <clears throat> and we hear hear them arguing. Uh, and what they're arguing about is the same thing as before. Okay, so they're losing meat. Blah 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 blah. There might be something in this garrison that needs a lot of meat, okay? So, grazing in the shadow of the fort only makes uh, our livestock easy targets. Moving them out of sight might take them off the minds of the soldiers. Can you, Sun Spears, help us? Okay, so let's talk to Herzman Zakano. He says, I am well aware of our duty to feed the garrison here, and never have I complained before. But lately, the soldiers there have gotten out of hand. They've been demanding far more of my herds than ever before. I even saw one of them using my cattle for target practice. At this rate, the entire village will starve come winter. I'm afraid that because the herd grazes so close to the garrison, the cattle make easy, tempting targets. Please seek out herdsman Mahonzi in the shadow of the fort and help him protect my herds as they move to safer pastures. Alright, let's just do this quest first, then we'll do the other one. Hey, I love, I love what you guys are saying, that you think it would be really cool. Don't you think, right? And, you know, like, maybe SB, Shadow Bemoth would spawn at the right time. And I'd have, like, oh, it would be so cool. I would love to do that. And, and then it gets even more exciting as well later when we do it in some of the deeper maps for the game. That some of us have never even had that experience of running around with hordes and hordes of players everywhere. It would be in a tasteful way. What I'd like to do is set up that event, or have the Games Master set up that event. Um, and the event starts at like, you know, nine o'clock. That's a random number I pulled out my ass. But it, it, it would start at nine o'clock and everyone would run off, okay? And at half nine, I start my character. And what that means is everyone's a little bit spread out and everyone's got like, uh, you know, as I'm exploring, some people are already a little bit further ahead. Some people are, you know, there are still people creating new characters, but we, we spread a bit, you know, there will be the people that rush. And then that gives it that gives it a, a, a chance to feel really authentic. This wouldn't be about like deceiving people to think, oh, Guild Wars 2 is super po super populated, blah 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 blah. Like, it's a wooden potatoes two video. It's like, like, I, I would have no incentive to do that. I just think it would be really cool. I think it would be interesting content, and I think it would it would give it more value. You know, and that's that's what often occupies my mind. Come on, Taukora! Damn it, Taukora! So here's the garrison, of course, as you've noticed. These will be the guards that have been picking off the livestock. Or some of them. They've done very well making the, the corners look like evil bastards. Can I join the Spud Club on EU? My guild's been dead for a year now and I'm so bored I'm playing by myself. Yes, you can. Yeah, EU. Definitely. It's an EU and an NA guild. If anything, I feel like the EU players we have are more active and... Like, quite often, I'll be like, hey, does anybody want to come for fractals? Does anybody want to do this? Does anybody want to do this? And usually, people will say, yeah, I'll come. I'll oh, sorry, I'm EU. Like, I would have easily a party of five, but they all want to be EU, and, and it's harder to get the NA groups, honestly. Okay, so that's a pretty big patrol there. Uh, I need to keep Dunk... I need, uh, I need to keep Milani buffed up. All right, we're going to try it. They don't have a priest with them. I think the best target is probably the zealots. So here we go, guys. Anthem. 
Let's kick it. Let's kick ass. Ready? There's nothing to fear. Go, 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 go. Don't let those sons of bitch dogs escape. A 500 gold bounty. Oh, okay. Well, we killed one with that meteor shower over there. Let's get Susuke healed up. He's hurting. Hang in there, bro. There's some health regen for you. Does the EU side organize raid training sessions? Currently, the guild doesn't really do very much. I really, really, really encourage you to check out that video I put up on Wooden Tootsie. Because the guild doesn't do as much as I want the guild to do. The guild could do so much. And actually, uh, if we end up with two games masters, one EU, one NA, I am actually starting to become more open to the idea of opening two branches of the Spud Club. I don't... I, I want everyone centralized. I do want everyone centralized. Um... So I think we're a long way from making that decision. But if the Games Master stuff works out so much that we really have a lot of active people who really love the guild and are actually playing and stuff. Uh, if it gets to that situation, then we, yeah, we could open up separate branches. Because you've got like the Alliance chat in game now too. So, you know, and I would, I would want everyone to join both guilds if they could. Well, no, I don't know. I don't know how it would work. That wouldn't work at all, would it? ArenaNet should raise the guild cap. I don't know. I, I, I understand that I'm in an incredibly privileged and unique position here uh, to to be able to cap so many players and have so many enthusiastic people. But you know the what, the thing that the thing that gets me, guys, is Guild Wars 2 launched with really poor social features. Really poor. It did so much to diminish the chances of you interacting with other players. That, in my opinion, it's actually a really crappy MMO in a lot of ways. Like, for, for that social component. And I think the devs recognize that. And I think they put in a lot of guild-based stuff. And especially with Heart of Thorns, they put in a lot of guild-based stuff. But most people just don't interact with that side of things. And I think it is, as an MMO, it's very important people have a community and a place to play and enjoy themselves and stuff. And I, if I can provide that for people, I would love to, right? So, so yeah. Um... Maybe I should clarify a bit more what I said, uh, said there. I mean, what, what I mean is like there's no, there are very few emotes to interact with one another. There's very reason, little reason to communicate with people beyond just a simple TY if they've just resed you. Uh, you know, ArenaNet did a lot to streamline it and it's awesome what they've done. Don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining that there's not kill stealing and node tagging and shit like that. This is all awesome. But all those things going into Guild Wars have streamlined the experience to the point where you very rarely actually acknowledge or interact with those around you and so I feel like the game needs to try much harder than other games to ensure that that actually happens so that people form bonds with one another okay hopefully that makes sense uh, Herdsman Manozi says uh, when I was young I wanted to be a great warrior I practiced my sling all day there you go new elite specialization weapon and dreamt of heroic battles at night now I'm older and I see them protecting the herds I see that protecting the herds is important too I'm content. Heroes can be found anywhere once you've learned how to recognize them. See, I don't know, man, right? Like, think... I'm going to do it. I'm going to be the dick, okay? P picture a random NPC you walk up to, a random farmer or something in Guild Wars 2. Does he have that level of depth? Or does he just say, oh, there are centaurs nearby. Careful. <laughs> I don't know. Is this nostalgia goggles? What is it? Am I wrong? Am I? Just, is it confirmation bias? You say Zekanu sent you? That makes sense. I think we should move the herd outside Nundu Bay. The water there is scarce, but they'll be like they'll like the shade of the trees. We best get moving before the soldiers in the garrison notice you. Okay. Uh, I just watched an old video of yours from 2014 called The Bloodstone Theory, and I find it hilarious how some of your predictions came true. Thanks very much. That's weird that you call that an old video because to me, uh, the Bloodstone theory feels very, like very recent to me. That was just season two after we did uh, after we saw the. Um... That's crazy. Season two is two years ago. You know, I had a weird moment. I was looking at one of my accounts online uh, the other day, and uh, I saw my age on it. And it, and it was so weird seeing my age now. Like, I, in my mind, I'm still like a 17, 18, 19 year old guy. It's like, shit, man, I'm in my mid-20s now. That's really weird to see. Like, it was like, wow. If I live my life again, I'll be like 50. It's crazy. Time's moving too quick. 
You're comparing apples and potatoes, WP. How am I? A random NPC out in the in the in the wilderness. Careful, Milani. Holy crap! Wow, she just aggroed a lot of stuff. Uh oh, here we go. How is it apples to, to potatoes? Are you being serious, or is that a, is that a joke? I feel like you should be able to compare a random NPC out in the wilderness in Guild Wars One to a random NPC out in the wilderness in Guild Wars Two, and and the and the basic blunt dialogue you get from from both of them. Whoa, the guards have come. This is bad. Unless all this crap is low level, we're in for some some serious hurt right now. Okay, careful. Are they dying? Oh, they're dying! We're losing the fight! We're losing the fight! We're losing the quest! No! I, uh, did we fail if all of the, the cows die? Go, keep charging, guys. Keep charging. Don't, don't you let them stop. Oh, God. This is bad. This is really bad. Dunkoro's dead. This is awful. We, we aggroed loads of insects, unfortunately. And we haven't kept up with the and there was a there was a guard patrol as well. We've got two dead players now. I suppose I can view the cows as sort of like a meat shield for us right now. I think we might have failed this guys. We got one cow left right now. Come on, Suitsuke, don't die, don't die, don't die, don't die, don't you die. Don't you die. This is awful. We're not going to be able to kill him in time. I think this is it. How close are we getting? Oh, we're sort of close. Alright, they've all bailed. They've all bailed. You have no honor, Sunspear. Blah, blah, blah. We had the entire garrison fighting us there. If there's another wave of enemies about to fight us, I think this is over. Uh, but let's see. And I think the quest is quite likely to spawn more mobs to, to charge us. Is that them up there on the, this cliff coming up towards us? Yep. There's a guard and a priest. There's a lot. Alright. I think we failed it then, guys. There's no way I'm getting those cows to do that. No way. One. There's only two left. How much damage they take? Signet. Some regen. No, last cow. This is it. Oh, there it is. Quest failed. You failed to protect the herd. Try again. You must leave the Marga Coast and then return. Alright, so here's what we do. We go through this gate here. Uh, you're not alone. Last time I wanted to register for my gym membership, I literally wrote 17 as my age and I had to cross it out. You don't know how awkward it felt when I corrected this as 20 and the gym guy looked at me like, what is wrong with this kid? <laughs> no, he didn't think, what is wrong with this kid? You're not a kid anymore, bro. That's the whole point, all right? He thought, what is wrong with this man? What is wrong with this adult? That's what he thought. All right, so this time we're actually going to clear the path first and we're going to absolutely devastate them. It's going to be easy. I do want to get cost back. I like it. I like sort of reveling in this period of time though, where we have very low uh, hero count, right? Do you guys think that when we get cost back, we should have a new vote for the build he runs? Because it's like he's reborn. He's a new man. Do you want to do that for a bit of fun? Because uh, we won't have another lineup change for a while after cost returns. Uh, the next character is a very cool character we get, by the way. The non human. Woman, but yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Did you know some in some cutscenes in Guild Wars 1 you can hold down one of the WAS keys and make your character spin? I learned about when doing cartography. Actually, I didn't know that. That sounds funny. That sounds really weird. So there we got some plants, which we don't really care about. Let's take the exact route that the, the cows are going to take. Yeah, you want to have a new vote when we get cost? Okay. Wow, when you're like 1, 1.57 meter, meters tall with Asian genes and you still look 14, it doesn't matter. I'm very envious of people that look incredibly young. You're going to look like a god when you're like 30 compared to everyone else around you. 
Oh, it can unfog certain parts of the map somehow. I didn't know that either. That's crazy. That is bizarre. Okay, I'm pretty sure we aggroed this queen before and some of this shit over here. Oh, that's the actual coast. So here's the Marga coast itself, by the way, guys. Which is just like full of insects and uh, animals drinking. Let's ignore that. Is it raining? What the hell? Raining at the garrison? Is there some story about how they summon rains by the garrison to... Uh, bring health and whatever. Why can't they just let us farm grind chaos gloves? You can. Get gold, farm grind gold. It's the same thing. It's crazy. What 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 is so difficult to understand? It, it's, dude, you can. I don't know, man. Taukora, don't you dare die. You're dying way too quickly there, love. They are. Just hang in there while Susuke nukes them. Hang in, I said. Don't you dare get more death penalty. Good. Okay, this was one of the big patrols. Uh, I wonder if we can aggro these bowmen out of the place. No, Milani. Can you see Milani there? She was charging up that hill. She was going into the damn place. Okay, so I think uh, that can't have been it though. What about? Is there another? Is there a group down here? I, I know we aggroed these insects accidentally, so let's let's grab just a couple of these before we redo the quest. Ooh, sugar! They're coming already. Okay. All right. This is nice. I love this really weird hybrid damage build we've got going on. Actually using a motivation paragon and for important reasons. I don't know what you mean, but it's not. It's about diversity. Doing the same gold farming method for items makes it even boring. What do you mean the same? Again, you can get gold in very diverse ways in this game. Though. That's why, you know, for as much as people bitch, oh, they nerfed COFP1 and they forced me to have diverse content. You know, that's this is the payoff here, right? When, when it's just about gold, then go get gold in diverse and interesting ways. Oh, but I get five gold extra an hour doing this one particular method, so I'm going to shackle myself to it. Please, that's your own fault if that's what you're doing. I'm, I'm, that's a hypothetical. That's not me being mean specifically to you. But, you know, when that sentiment comes out, that's I just don't understand it, right? Like, earn gold from fractals for a while. Earn gold from dungeon runs for a while. Fuck, I earned a lot of gold just PvPing. Just play the game, just do shit, and then focus on the, 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 the profits you get, put into the, the, the Chaos Gloves, the gems. It's the exact same thing as if there was a vendor in-game. Like, honestly, if it, 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 it is as close as ArenaNet could drop an NPC in the game in a specific area, and he sells the Chaos Gloves, and it's got the little currency there is 400 gems. There you go. Instead of in a UI panel, I would prefer that. And I do think that's got some. some but you know, we're not. It's not too far away. Uh, Elska said you'd be surprised the amount of gold I'm getting just by doing map completion. Well, I remember when we did our challenge, uh, and we actually succeeded at it on our necro. Didn't we end up with like 100 gold just by completing the personal story? 100 G's. All right, so let's try this again. Do you have any insight about the charm pet bug when the pet is owned by another player? Know why they don't fix it? Do I not have any insight about the charm pet bug when the pet is owned by another player? Um, so charm pet is the skill that you use to capture a pet in the first place, long cast time, and then it used to be you needed it on your bar to have a pet as a ranger. Uh, but later they also allowed it to double up as a heal, didn't they? Or, no, they had Comfort Animal double up as... Will passively give you the animal too, didn't they? That was one of the later patches. So what is the Charm Pet bug? I feel like once upon a time I might have known this. But I don't anymore. Is it something to do with ownership? You can steal the pet from someone else or something? I don't know. What is it? Uh, Tiny Time, he says, I never played Guild Wars 1, but I love Guild Wars 2. Would it be worth buying Guild Wars 1 at the very least and playing it for the lore? Uh, 
my, my, my book standard, my boilerplate answer to this has always been, if you have a friend, one friend who's also really interested in doing it with you, then you can co-op your way through it. And the fact that you're doing it co-op will make it more fun. Drink a few beers, get some pizza, have some fun with it. You know, listen to some podcasts or whatever while you do it. Start totally fresh, go through. Then, uh, then I reckon you can probably squeeze some enjoyment. But the truth is, this game is old. It's unintuitive. It's clunky. It's, uh... It's not easy at face value to get into. Here we go. This is the patrol here. And this time we're going to be ready for them. Let's do it. Uh, we're going to kill that scribe quickly as well. So it doesn't blow up with meteors. The cows. Don't kill the cows. Oh my god. Milani, finish it off. Christ. Are they alive still? They are still alive. Good. There's another wave coming as well. Uh, has Milani got... Yeah, she does have strength of honor. No, you don't. No, you don't. I want cripple or something right now. Let's finish these fucking things off. Um, uh, the, the other problem, though, is is this. What you're playing right now, is to me, what I'm playing, what you're watching on this stream, this is as good as it gets, Nightfall. I really like Nightfall. I think it's so densely packed with good writing. Um, and it's well-paced. And it feels epic. And it's that perfect mix of adventure. And it's... it's, it's, the, it's it's the, the tone of it is just where I like it as well. It is quite dark and it is quite grim, but it's also got a lot of opportunity for humor and lightheartedness and like it, it, it is several shades darker than Guild Wars 2 ever gets in my opinion. But it's not you know completely over the, off out of off the deep end crazy like this. This to me is is the height of, of, of the storytelling of the franchise, right? But uh, to be a completely new player that jumps into this. I don't know. It's so hard to enjoy it because you don't quite know how the quest works and you're struggling with the UI and you, you've got all these heroes you need to gear out and it sort of speeds you through. Perfect world, you should, in my opinion, play it all in order. Because um, if you've gone through prophecies, you've gone through factions, you've slowly learned the stuff. But, you know, a lot of that is drudgery and it's slow and it's not very good and it's not very smartly done and it's a bit shit, really. So it's a big time investment. But, you know, if you want the AP in Guild Wars 2, if you want some Hall of Monuments points too. Again, if they ever connect the friends list, which I wish they do, you can still chat with people in your guild and stuff. That would be so cool. Um, but obviously you can't right now. And so. so, I don't know. It's, it's hard to recommend Guild Wars 1. It is hard. It's always much cooler on paper. When I can say in a video, oh, this happened. Or I can show you Cormier absorbing Abaddon's power, or I can do this, or this, or this. Uh, you know, that works well, but to actually go back and play it... You know, there's a learning curve there. And also, the other thing is, um, a lot of the things that appealed to people in Guild Wars 1 uh, don't appeal to people in Guild Wars 2. You know, these kind of slower... Uh, basically, Guild Wars 2, I think, is more of a... Uh, It's less of a tactical game. It's less about um, planning. It's less about... Uh, I mean, obviously, comp and stuff is very important. If I, for, for the personal story and shit. I mean, basically, Guild Wars 2 is way more accessible. Way more face roll. Way more sort of, oh, here's just have the story. And the story is not very strong. Guild Wars 2 is more like, okay, the story is really strong. But also, you have to properly invest yourself into the game to focus on it. There you go. How easy was that? Done. Let's go back. To Ron Jock. We'll probably kill a few things as we go. Let's get the bounty from the Wandering Priest here too. I only managed to finish Guild Wars 1 without rage and quitting by playing with my best friend whilst we listen to you playing it in the background. Dude, that sounds awesome. If that is not one of the most uh, <laughs> egotistical things I've ever said, I don't know what it is, but that does sound awesome. It is said Varesh Osa has turned her back on the five true gods. But could you inspire the people of Corner to remember the ideals of Alona and the Sun Spears? I offer the blessing of the gods to you if you would help destroy the hostile plants causing so much trouble in the area. This will show the people of Corner the Sun Spears still have a strong leader. Alright, let's kill these before they kill all the cows after the quest was over, which would be fucking lame. Yeah, so that is another recommendation. I may as well do it, right? Like... Uh, my other boilerplate response throughout the years has been this. You could play Guild Wars 1 while listening to my Let's Play of Guild Wars 1. 
and sort of keep them in sync. So, you know, if I finish an episode at the end of a mission and you've not finished it yet, pause the series until you finish that mission too. And then and then keep them in sync together. And this way, what, what, I, what will happen, okay, is Prophecies is a really layered and interesting story, sort of. Uh, but a lot of it is hidden in quests, and the order that quests come at you is crazy, and it's walls of text, and it's weird bits of trivia and shit that you're just going to miss. Just straight up, you're going to miss. But what I did was I sort of went very encyclopedic about my, my Let's Play of it, where I went through every little bit, except pre-searing, every little bit. And I talk about all the little bits as I go along. So what you get the advantage of listening to my Let's Play while you play Prophecies, the advantage you have is you kind of just get all the information that thrown at you without you having to seek it out and you have to seek a lot of shit out i'm pretty boring and there's a lot of super speed and the quality's not great and come on i was just starting out so you know it's not the best thing in the world but uh slowly i find my feet and definitely by the time of like eye of the north and stuff i'll show you the works like there's a thing in eye of the north um one of the bigger projects i had while doing that let's play uh in eye of the north where there's this big fighting tournament arena and there are tons of different NPCs that can appear in this fighting tournament. Tons. Uh, there's like heroes you can unlock by doing it. There's, there's loads of stuff. And lots of them are characters we've met in the franchise before. And so if you're watching my Let's Play while playing the game, you can do the tournament a couple of times and be like, whatever. But what I did was I painstaking. I did like hundreds of roles in that tournament so that I could show off every single NPC that would appear. And I told you guys a story about who that character was and where they came from and blah, 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 blah. And that took me hours to work out and figure out and sort out. And you just get to skip all of the effort because it's right there. Um... But yeah, like, Prophecies is really bad. Like, the perspective is, like, not just you going through it, but there's an adventuring band of heroes called D uh, Devonna, Sin, Menlo, and so forth, who are also going through the adventure. And it's easy to miss their quests when you really shouldn't and stuff. Um, so that the, the, the Prophecies, for all that it lacks, it at least gives you that information. Here's uh, Zekini. And he says to us... Uh, okay, he's talking about the other thing. Uh, some are still wary of the Sunspear's presence here, but there is no doubt that you have done us a great service this day. Now I know why Milani has been so quick to side with you. Those who still doubt will surely uh, rethink and position every time... Uh, sorry, that position every time they put meat on the table. And there's another level, which is good. We need these levels badly. Uh, fine. Well, mm, I, I don't really like what I did there, but fine. Uh... Bump the smites, bump the divine, bump the energy storage, bump the mysticism. Alright, so let's do this quest. This might be the last quest of the stream, guys. But uh, I would love to get cost back. We might do this quest and then the cost quest. I don't know. Shh, we'll try. We'll see what happens. Yeah, Cherry Tune says that's exactly what we did. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it would be a cool experience. I think it would ease you into the whole franchise. And you get that real first-hand perspective of everything, too. Because that, that series is very dry. I can't really imagine too many people just sitting down, raw watching it, really. Maybe some people would. I've watched some pretty boring and low-energy Let's Plays in the past myself, so I don't know. Maybe it's possible. Anyway, here we go. Uh, Elder Jonah says, Once every year, devout followers of Melanju must commune with the natural world. Through prayer and meditation, they receive the blessings of Melanju and further their talents. Now that she's returned, Milani must undergo this ritual. So remember this, by the way. Followers of Melandru is kind of interesting. When Prophecies first came out, it was like each class was tied to a god and that was it. And so it was Rangers with Melandru and that's it. But those boundaries started to break down uh, with Nightfall. Actually, they broke down with, with factions. Uh, but they, those boundaries started to break down. And in Nightfall, they released the Dervish. And what the Dervish has is Wind Prayers, which would be Duena. And Earth Prayers, which would be Melandry. Um, meanwhile, Paragons uh, kind of followed uh, Balthazar and, and Duena, I suppose. So, so, so Melandry is not a ranger. Uh, sorry, Maloney is not a ranger, but she is a devout follower of Melandry. Okay? So you can imagine lots of rangers and dervishes going to do this kind of thing. It's cool. Um... Uh, our crops depend heavily on water from the Elon's tributaries and from our deep wells. Lately, we have fallen on dry, tough times. Perhaps you could find the cause of the recent drought? To make matters worse, the lands have grown dangerous, what with Varish's increased military presence and the now hostile local flora and fauna. Would you protect Maloney while she makes her journey through the Marga Coast? Okay, so this is very cool, right? Um, 
they've painted such a grim picture of Elona already, haven't they? Oppressed by their military, starving. These people think they're going to starve by winter. And they also don't even have much water. So big, important thing here. And again, look at how densely... T people who know the, the Nightfall story, you'll look at it, you'll, you'll recognize stuff in this dialogue here. It's so densely packed, right? Uh, he talks about a drought, okay, in the river, what could be causing it. These all become things. Uh, but so the river Elon flows like so, guys. It's here, and then it flows down. And, you know, you've got this big delta here. And the reason why corner really gets very much uh, vegetation, uh, it's kind of like, you know, I, I always think this is supposed to be an analogous to uh, analogous to the, uh, the Nile in Egypt, I think, anyway. Um, it's the River Elon, right? The River Elon provides water to all these places, and it, it even seeps under here to where we were with the Sun's Bear Sanctuary and so forth. But they fell on dry times. Um, in Guild Wars 2, Palawa Joko, who we haven't met yet and don't understand yet in Alona, all that good stuff will come. Don't forget, this has what some people consider to be the best villains that this franchise has ever done. Uh, Palawa, he'll, he'll become a thing later. Uh, but what he does is he actually dams this river up here. Dams it. And so none of these people have water anymore. And the, the ultimate fate of all these people in 250 years' time, no matter what we do in this campaign, they lose this water. They, uh, they are weakened by it. They are starved out. And, and it is from this advantageous position that Palawa uh, wrests control back of Elona in our absence in the 250-year gap. How cool is that? And the, the river being dammed up here, it actually flows in a different direction. It flows north instead through the Crystal Desert, which is why in Guild Wars 2, the Crystal Desert has a massive river flowing through it. Okay, and that's why if you guys go to this this guy here to, to connect the dots for you This might this might be an interesting perspective What this man here on the Marga coast is talking about is the river Elon Okay in Guild Wars 2 there is a section in the Straits of Devastation called the Elon Sea Right because this same river gets dammed and it goes all the way up there and, and it eventually breaks out into the sea near the Straits of Devastation There is a region in Straits of Devastation called the Sea on of Elon or Elon Sea or whatever All right, this is the same river. We're talking about there you go across a 250 year gap and a massive geographical gap But there that's a connection to what you know in Guild Wars 2 Hopefully that's fun to think about um, So yeah, we're gonna try and sort things out Milani is a friend. I will protect her with my life. Milani's meditations. Uh, she says, I'm worried about costs. I know I give him a hard time, but that pride adult nitwit is important to all of us. Let's get him out of, out of there fast. And um, Don't tell him I was worried about him, okay? Don't worry. We'll, we'll sort out with costs. It's fine. All right, come on then, Milani. Every frame is so dense. There is so much going on. <laughs> what? what? What do you mean? Is that... With regard to what? You've watched the LP series twice and Eye of the North a third time. Wow, why Eye of the North a third time? Do you go all the way, all the way to the end of Winds of Change, by the way? Do you do you do the whole haul? Do you do Hearts of the North and stuff? So Milani says, A branch of the Great Elon flowed abundantly through here, but in recent times the water has receded and this pond is all that's left. I shall ask Melandru about this. Goddess Melandru, giver of life, Hear my call. Let my spirit flow with the currents of the Great Elon. So this little pond here, this is it. This is all that's left. Pretty crappy, right? It used to flow all the way over there. Uh, and we're... Oh, okay. And here we go. We're seeing some pretty deadly stuff. Corrupted natures. They're using the, the Mandragore models. Uh, which is always fun, I guess, right? Fucking Mandragores hit so hard, man. It's it hurts. It hits so hard. Die Talcora, come on. We we play this on a knife edge, guys. You can't see the party window. I've had it hidden most of the stream. Look at this. We we're playing this on a knife edge. People come so close to dying. Oh, you do go all the way to the end. That's crazy, man. I'm really, really proud. Thank you. That's so cool. That's really interesting to hear. They're like Mordrum. Maybe, yeah, uh, kind of Mordrum y. The Twitter age can't read stuff with more than 140 characters. The trouble with Guild Wars 1 is exactly that. Uh, nearly everyone had something to say and a lot of it is somehow relevant. Yeah, but that's cool. I refuse to believe that you can't add quantity to your text. I'm disappointed in the people who made that decision at the launch of Guild Wars 2. That, oh, people don't like walls of text anyway, so fuck it, let's not put them in. 
I'm disappointed in that. I really am. Because this is exactly what I'm talking about. Not sort of respecting the intelligence of your audience, right? But, and they may have a point. A lot of people might skip through it. But there are a lot more people who would appreciate its existence on a level that keeps giving years after you've put it in there. Years after you've put it in there. I don't know. I, I, I just think the whole UI for, for giving people uh, uh, text more in Guild Wars 2, like the actual dialogue boxes, needs an overhaul. I would love to see the overhaul. And it, it's not just about putting more information in. It's stuff like, oh, it's annoying when NPCs randomly get in combat and run away from you uh, while you're trying to talk to them and stuff like that. It's stuff like the way that the camera works. I'm still watching the Guild Wars 1 stuff at the moment. Uh, at the moment, the only thing I'd wish for is a single playlist for every single video in chronological order. Well, you can't... Uh, that, that's a bit... Oh my god, we're actually going to wipe here. This is a hard place. That's, a, that's uh, a bit of a weird question, because if you go to my channel page, I have a section called Guild Wars 1 as the section. Um, and it start, it's all labelled. It's playlist 1. It says number 1, prophecies. Then it says playlist 2. Factions, and it says playlist three, Eye of the North. Then it says four, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Nightfall. Then it says four, Eye of the North. Then it says five, uh, Warring Crite. And then it says six, Heart, Hearts of the North. Well, then it, I think it just says Guild Wars Beyond after that. I think it's just six. It's Guild Wars Beyond. And then there's a uh, there's another playlist on there called uh, Bonus Stuff, which is End Game and it's PVP stuff and it's all those other things. So it is ordered, really. All those playlists are in are in order, and they're all there. I mean, combining the playlist might be a thing, but I don't really see the point. You can just click to the next one, right? The the problem I had when I was playing Nightfall for the first time and doing a series on it was all this shit I'm showing you guys right now. This was all bonus stuff to me. I, I did a main series of all the main content, but there are a lot of bonus videos for Nightfall, but they don't appear in the main playlist as far as I remember. I tried to fix it a bit later. Maybe they're there now. So most people who watch the Nightfall series skip through a lot of cool stuff, like... Uh, the, the, the centaur quest and the, the tree that's near here, the ancestor tree that seems to be a bit like a Silvari tree. There's a lot of cool, crazy things. I did, the first time I ever properly talked about the Guild Wars gods was in a bonus episode on Nightfall around this area and corner. And that was all missing from the playlist and a lot of people missed those episodes and I think those are some of the best parts of Nightfall. Um, that's where some of the huge lore bombs are. I don't know whether I integrated them in in the end or not. Okay, so, uh, so Milani deduced from the end of that that the Elon is in much pain. She says, let us move forward and learn more. Why is the Elon in pain? It's, it's, you see all these little building blocks that just seem really ominous and fucked up about Corner, right? It's like, shit, what is Varish doing? She says, I remember spending much time in my youth climbing these rocks. It was during those times that I realized my great love of all the th natural gifts Melandru has bestowed upon us. Give me a moment to reflect. And then she says, Goddess Melandry, protector of nature, hear my calling, encase my mind with the strength of these stones. Oh my god, Susuke has nuked him. Good job, Susuke. Oh, 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 careful, Taukora. Careful, careful, careful. You see what I mean about this knife edge, guys? Jesus Christ. There's nothing to fear, guys. You've got this. And yeah, there's this skill here, Ebon Hawk. Yep. Oh, Abyssic says, yeah, you organized it great. I just wanted a less organized version to watch everything in the order I made it. Oh, well, you can do that too. Uh, it's a little bit annoying, but all you have to do, if you want to do it that way, is go to YouTube, go to my channel, click on the video tab, and then order it by date uploaded, which, it, no, it already is. But you can put it in descending order, so you'll see the very first video that still is on my channel, uh, which is a guide to char battle plans. Which I did years before the Let's Play started, and just for fun. And I did several other videos, but they had like copyrighted music and stuff, which have all been gone now. But the Char Battle Plan one is still there. That's the first one on my channel. And then it will say the Prophecies Let's Play, and it will start. And then it will be all those episodes. And if you do it in that version, you'll get other shit. You'll see that it was around when I was doing this here in Corner, that there was a Guild Wars 2 video competition that came out called uh, the Ambassador Challenge or whatever it was. Oh my god, look at the look at this damage. Look at this damage we're taking. We're gonna die. This is too hard. We can't do it. I wonder if we just have to pump back and kill him. I forgot to buff Milani, that's one thing that I should have done. And we could get a lot more damage rolling. I 
need a target to use myself heal. Damn, I, I didn't heal the right thing. Did the, was that a quest fail or no? No, we just got to defeat them. Okay, that's good. We'll just re we'll just res and then find a place. We should res nearby too. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and if you do that, you'll find out that it was around here that I did my Guild Wars 2 in 60 seconds video. You'll find the What the Fuck No Healer video, which was my first sort of discussion piece. I had some douchebag, like a couple of months ago, was like, oh, Wooden Potatoes, you used to do good content, but now all you do is rambling discussions. Um, this was months ago. And uh, he was like, you used to only do all these, like, highly blah, blah, uh, like, uh, uh, it was when we were talking about the lore series. And he was like, oh, you, you always used to do stuff like the lore series and you don't anymore. And I was like, that's crazy because way back at the start of the channel, when I was here in Nightfall, I'd already started the discussion videos. And the first of those discussion videos was, uh, what about, I, I don't even like, by the way, I don't think that's a very good video at all. Um, but it was basically, hey, here's why Guild Wars 2 is good because it doesn't have a healer. And I basically said, oh, because healing's boring. I do think I had valid points there, but I, I, I worded my argument in a really bad way and people only fixated on one part of the video. And it, it's not a very good video. But it's got a lot of viewership and hate and stuff. So. But yeah, um, you would see that come in. And uh, when I got to Eye of the North, you'd see me telling my stories about when I went to uh, one of the gaming conventions and tried to get footage but failed. Uh, yeah. Do you think Guild Wars 2 will introduce heroes? No, I don't. Uh, one of the things you have to understand, Guild Wars 2 was an uh, initial concept for Guild Wars 2, was the idea that everyone had their own hero called a companion that would sort of make up for elements of your build that you didn't have yourself. And then in the end, they were like, why are we doing this? Let's just give everyone a self-heal. And then that... Talking about what made Guild Wars 1 good. You love being able to choose your skills and capture elites. Capturing elites was badass. I actually feel like you can choose your skills in Guild Wars 2. And I feel like build diversity is higher in Guild Wars 2 uh, than it ever was in Guild Wars 1. And people will contest me on that, but they're wrong to contest me on that. Because there is so much more build diversity. Uh, people tend to... It's not exactly nostalgia goggles. But what a lot of Guild Wars 1 vets will do this de these days is they'll look at their old main and they will rattle off every single build they use through every single meta across every single game type from the start of the game till the day they stop playing it over like a three year time span. And they'll compare all those builds, okay, to, uh, to the one single current meta and the one game type they're currently playing in Guild Wars 2. And they'll say, ah, Guild Wars 2 has less build diversity. And they're wrong. They're, they're wrong to make that comparison. They're also, uh, the other thing people do as well is, um, for some reason we value, you know, if I swap four of these skills in Guild Wars 1 here to four different skills, we value that as, uh, as a totally different build. And yet if I swap uh, half of my skill bar in Guild Wars 2 over, it's kind of just the same thing sort of thing. I don't know. I think Guild Wars 2 could do better for build diversity. Don't get me wrong. I'm not just blindly, blindly saying, oh, it's, it's amazing. I think that it doesn't do, uh, incentivize the different stat types well enough at all. But it, it's not, it's not, you know, a night and day difference. I like the, the system they did. With the, but, uh, but signet capturing, skill capturing, that was badass, man. I, I agree completely. And I miss that a lot. People are wrong. You hear that? Wrong. You can be, people can be wrong. Yeah. If, it, if there's any one thing I disagree with, and I don't understand how it's such a, a well-accepted thing to say these days, is when people say opinions can't be wrong. All right, I'm, I'm going to look a bit ignorant here, maybe, all right? But I don't know where that comes from. What do you mean opinions can't be wrong? Are you fucking crazy? Of course opinions can be wrong. What kind of coddled Disney perspective is that? Opinions can't be wrong. Opinions are based on information, and if that information was misfounded or... Uh, based on logical fallacies or incongruencies, of course it's going to be. Of course you can have a wrong opinion. Of course you can be wrong to hold some some thought or something. I hate that people just shout at themselves behind that. No, um, it's just an opinion. You can't contest me on it. Everyone's allowed to have an opinion. You're allowed to have an opinion, but you're not allowed to say that your opinion's right. If there is, you know, reason to believe that it's not, I need to buff. What's this called? Let's get strength of honor rolling. 
The longer this goes, the sooner Taukora is going to die. There you go. She's out. Fuck. We targeted the wrong thing. These monks are really strong. And you see that all over the place on the internet. It's just an opinion. Opinions can be wrong. Well, that's just my opinion. Yeah, and you're you're pushing it on other people, and and now we're having a discussion about the merit of your opinion. And guess what? It doesn't have any merit. So I'm telling you it. That's like you can't hide behind that. Oh, it's just an opinion. It doesn't mean anything. Make opinions, not onions. <laughs> anyway, I, I don't know. I miss when pets were hard to get and had some prestige to them. That's an interesting one. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. There's a whole there's about a million things I want to sound like. Like, I don't know. I kind of agree, but then I also think, you know, it's just one class out of nine. And, you know, if, what, if they had some kind of cosmetic... First of all, there's like, okay, do you lock genuinely useful stuff behind rare circumstances that not many people can get access to? No, you don't, because that's against the idea of Guild Wars 2. So you don't do that. Uh, you give prestige to pets in Guild Wars 2 through cosmetics instead. And that's fair, and it's like, okay, all right, I can add new colors, shiny versions of tigers or whatever the fuck if they're super rare, and you can unlock them and blah, blah, blah. But then it's like, okay, but only one-ninth of the player base, one of the nine classes, really cares a massive amount about this, perhaps. And then maybe you can discuss that a bit more, but, you know. And then I also wonder, you know, how much prestige there really was to pets in Guild Wars 1 in the first place. Like, did they just feel prestige? Like, if I look back at the Phoenix, right, I used to think that the, the Canthan Phoenix was a high prestige pet in Guild Wars 1. But what did it actually take to get the Phoenix? It was just complete the story. That was it. It was complete the story and capture it from the end zone. So put that into Guild Wars 2 turns these days. All right, there's a pet that you can only get at the end of the Zaitan mission. I probably wouldn't think that's prestigious anymore. But is that just because I'm a more like involved player these days than I was in Guild Wars 1? And does that mean that less involved players of Guild Wars 2 these days do think there's prestige? Maybe, maybe casual Guild Wars 2 players think that the Tiger is just as prestigious as the, uh, or, you know, the release Tiger, where you could only get at the end of Heart of Thorns or whatever the hell it was. Maybe they think that's just as prestigious as I used to feel that the Phoenix was. We're probably going to wipe here again, guys, but I can't really do anything about it. We can try and burst stuff down as best we can. At least they're not targeting, uh, what's the space at the moment. I think we might have... An, if we have another wave to fight, I think we'll wipe. But we might have actually just about hammered our way through this one. We are achieving meta-level opinion discussions. My brain has no sleep nor caffeine and the sun hurt. Right, I saw some guys defending a guy who got arrested in Germany for doing the Nazi salute in front of police. We're saying, oh uh, yeah, freedom of speech. Moi. Fuck off, man. That's got nothing to do with freedom of speech. Well, freedom of speech is a totally other discussion in my opinion. And it's a really hard discussion to have, specifically when it comes to Americans. That's not be being trying to race, uh, be you know, a nationalist or whatever. But like, it, it means something in the states a lot more because isn't it like one of your, um, you're like, oh God, what? Oh, why am I blanking? It's like in the Constitution or whatever the call that ever the hell. Every man has a right to free speech, or whatever. Uh, I did a module on this when I studied lang language and the, the realistic scenario, at least in the UK. And it, it, it's just a fancy, it's just a thing of flight, right? Like, the idea of free speech is bollocks, and it always has been. Like, for example, we have a place in London where um, you're free to go and speak and have an audience, and, uh, you know, you have a platform to speak to the public, and people just go there. It's like some park, I can't remember where it is. But, uh, you know, it's quite famous for this, and so it's even a bit of a tourist thing. Like, people go there, and they'll listen, and people will talk about the world, tell their stories, stuff like that. But uh, they have stationed there all the time, all, every day of the week, all the year, uh, police. Uh, police to watch, why? Because if you get up there and you try to exercise your right to free speech, whatever the balls that is, and you start spitting hate and vitriol and racism and shit out, they'll arrest you and take you away. And this is well understood and accepted as a, as a, a perfectly fine thing to do, because at the end of the day, people shouldn't have a platform to incite hate amongst one another. And that undermines your idea of free speech immediately, but we live in a society that's built on that. So it, it, it's, it's kind of a cultural thing, but I think it's a bit more well understood where I live.
Ink says, holy crap, he's still live. Awesome. Yeah, actually, this stream's gone a long time. The thing with Guild Wars is I can't easily alt-tab, so usually I would do, like, a, an uptime and check the time. I don't know how long we've been going at the moment. We'll probably have to stop. Uh, WP, do you think having lots of gold in Guild Wars 2 makes it boring? Talking about people who can buy anything when new content comes out? Yeah, I do. I've got a friend who invested in uh, Mystic Coins. And... Um, and hit the jackpot, basically, because Mystic Coins are worth tons now. Hit the absolute jackpot. Like, sorted for life in Guild Wars style stuff. I won't go into specifics, because that's up to him or whatever, right? But, um... Is this the last thing? It's a level 28 mob. There we go. Uh... Oh, yeah, there we go. We finished the quest. Everyone dead except me and Milani, who rezzed at the end. That's cool. Uh... Yeah, but he, he doesn't even really play at the moment. This was a guy I used to farm a lot with. I used to do dungeons all the time with. We farmed our Bifrost together, played constantly. But now he doesn't have any, he doesn't care about anything or need anything. And he's just got like these mountains of gold. Uh, I think it takes something away, yeah, because playing an MMO is about having goals, right? And if all of those goals are undermined, because you can just have whatever the fuck you want at any moment. It's kind of like, uh, <laughs> it makes me think there's a, there's a show in our country. Uh, the Brits listening will, will know it very well. Only Fools and Horses, okay? Um, anyway, it's about this guy that's sort of grinding through life, right? And he's like constantly trying to make it. He's, he's always hungering for money. And they did a very interesting thing at one point in the series where basically they, I, I think they won the lottery. And, uh, and they make it to the top. And the, the show then goes to portray, I think, in a very good way, uh, sort of that, that loss of the love of life. When you sort of get up there. Because it's like, man, I enjoyed the grind. I miss the grind. I miss working for things. I miss... And then, and so on. Anyway, let's see what Milani had to say through all of this. So, um... So, she said, uh... That she remembered climbing around on the rocks. And after we cleansed that, she said, This land is greatly tormented. Although I do not know why. Let us keep uh, pace. There is one more location I must visit. And then she said, the death of this tree is most peculiar. Throughout my lifetime, it always thrived, and now it's gone. I shall meditate on this. Goddess Melandra, keeper of balance, hear my calling. Fill my soul with the knowledge of this ancient tree. I don't like the ways that she calls Melandra the keeper of balance. Isn't that more of a Grent thing? Or am I just with his scales and whatever? Uh, Milani, uh, she says, this tree has undergone much suffering, and its death was not a natural one. The water, stra uh, sorry, the water trapped within its roots is laced with a vile corruption. And she says, thank you for protecting me. Melandria has blessed me with knowledge and enhanced abilities. She has answered our questions through the earth, the trees, and the water. A great darkness resides in the Ellen, and the creatures we encounter today are a direct result of that darkness. Let us return to the village. I must inform Elder Jonah. So something messed up is going on. And in a weird way, we already know what it is, based on a description we had earlier. Okay, it's just the two of us, so we're a little bit scared right now. We've got to avoid hostile plants and stuff. So let's get going. So, moderation in moderation. That's also moderation in moderation in moderation. <laughs> you know what that makes me think of? Uh, I'm sure a lot of people watched this when they were younger. A, a show called Recess, a cartoon. Uh, the first time I ever he heard that phrase, all things in moderation, was on that show. I don't remember what was happening in the episode that caused one of the characters to say it. But I think it was that, that tall, thin, nerdy girl with the glasses. I think she at one point she says, you know what they say, all things in moderation, or, or something like that. And I just remember her saying that. And that, that, that was my, as a young person, my first experience of that turn of phrase. For some reason, that's stuck in my brain forever. You really want to play as a Kodan? I wouldn't want to play as a Kodan in this hot savanna area here, area here. Speaking of gods, do you think Cormier is a bit of a shame? To me, it's still more or less the five gods. You know, I think you might be right there. I think uh, Cormier has been a bit disappointing as a god. A bit vague. A bit uninterpretable. It's not really clear what she's doing. There was that interesting information at the end of Nightfall where she's like, Yes, I, I will need your help. There's much to do, blah, blah, blah. But whether that was referencing, you know, future stories beyond Guild Wars 2 even, or it was just referencing the upcoming Domain of Anguish patch a little bit later, I don't know. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, we've gone half an hour over, guys. We have. It's two hour, two and a half hours we've been streaming. I'm gonna have to stop then. Are we not gonna save costs today? Oh, I wanna save. We're gonna save costs. I'm gonna save costs. Screw it. Indeed, this is a bad omen. The darkness in the land is most disturbing. Our way of life depends on water from the stream and our wells. It brings us food and gives us life. I pray to Melandu that this drought will pass. We haven't gone over on a stream for ages, so do you know what? I'm gonna say screw it and I'm gonna go over today. I have a uh, a Q and A I need to edit anyway, so it's fine. I've got I've got content to do. No, thank you for that finger lights. I really really appreciate that you did that. <laughs> so there you go. That's those things done. It would be cool to play as a dwarf, but Tengu, love heart, love heart. One of the things I wanted to do in the race video was to, to discuss. Um, Sort of the uh, the idea that ArenaNet didn't want uh, sort of traditional races to be a part of the game, so that their franchise, their IP, could stand on its own sort of thing, be its own sort of thing. Um, and then the idea of adding dwarves eventually sort of goes against that. In fact, half the reason I think the law was written to remove the dwarves from the world uh, in Eye of the North was just so that they could sort of carve out their own niche with the sequel and blah blah blah. Um, maybe they feel like enough times passed now that they, they can sort of bring it back as sort of a, a gimmicky so hey oh we have Aiden targeted this is really cool I love seeing look here's Eve let's talk to Eve let's see what Eve says surely you don't fear children's stories undead armies that hunger for mortal flesh clawing their way out of the grave with the fanatic blind will to serve Withered husks of desiccated zombies, shredding flesh with unrelenting claw-like fingers, the beauty of a stilted yet ever-screaming heart. Such things frighten you? How sad. You really need to get out more. Oh, these guys are the best. These Elonian elements this drive me crazy with their babble of peace. I learned better in Sermia when the char came. Magic isn't something you hide and save like a secret. It's something to share, one fireball at a time. Here's Menlo. Has a very small... So Menlo, it's interesting what we're looking at here because Menlo had a very big role in Prophecies and then an even bigger role, a huge role in Factions. And now he's sort of just in the background for Nightfall. Uh, my father was a priest of Duena. He told me tales of a voice that speaks in the darkness of our dreams. Wow. That's like Mordemoth to the Silvari. I sense that voice now beneath Alona's surface. My mother was a priestess of Balthazar. She taught me what to do with nightmares. You fight them and you never give in. Mad Mind says, hello there. Been away from Guild Wars for a year or so now after all my mates stopped playing. Now I'm thinking of coming back. Well, what's a good place to start with the new stuff? I'd say do the Heart of Thorns story. And then do the uh, Season 3 first patch. There's not too much beyond that. And then have a look at the current events. Try and find a guild to join. You can totally join ours, the Spud Club. Just send me a message in game or a mail. And uh, with, if you're going to do it through mail, though, guys, uh, drop your account name as well. Um, yeah. I sort of wish Season 3 was done right now, because if Season 3 was done, I could offer you a lot of content, but the devs have been a bit slow on the uptake, unfortunately, as we've all discussed at great, at great lengths. All right, Dunkey, what's going on, bro? He says, if we're to have a chance against Varish and her troops, we need to win over the, com the corn and commoners. Luck is on our side. It seems an old scholar approached Narashi in an attempt to establish contact with us. This scholar, uh, Karendu? is a well-respected man among the Cormans. Cornans. He believes we share a common enemy in Varish. He and his two sons have arranged a meeting in Sunwood Marches to discuss his stance. If we can convince Karendu and his sons to join us, it could increase our support in Corner. It is crucial that you rendezvous with Karendu as quickly as possible. Can you do it? Well, this should be a breeze. And this is the final building the base mission. I guess... Oh, guys, I'm playing too much. I'm playing too much. Far, far, far too much. Let's do this one, though. Menlo's WP's favourite NPC? No, I don't think so. Uh, I mentioned on the stream yesterday that... Um, one of the biggest mysteries... Uh, for Guild Wars 2, I think the most obvious blunt mystery for everyone in Guild Wars 2, is the Wizard's Tower. Uh, I almost told you in that stream as well. I think that the Guild Wars 1 equivalent of that is Avinia. And I actually think Avinia is my favourite character. I think Avinia is a badass. From Guild Wars 1. 
Now, that might just be because I'm forgetting other characters at different moments, and I'm sure there is a better answer out there. But right now, who sticks with me? Who has lasted the test of time? And who deserves to be the favorite character based on that alone? Avinia. So, Avinia, for those that don't know, uh, you had the White Mantle, rest control of Kryta after the royalty fled. And um, some people in Kryta realized that the White Mantle were corrupt thugs and bastards. And so they started, uh, so they, they abandoned Kryta and started trying to capture it for themselves to reinstate the royal family. These people were known as the Shining Blade and they hid in the Maguma jungle. The Shining Blade needed leadership though. And the way that the Shining Blade chose to uh, organize themselves and were led was they had a triumvirate system. They had three leaders. They had a man named Marcus, a woman named Saedra. I think I got that right. And another woman named Avinia. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, Marcus uh, turned out to be a spy for the White Mantle. At some point, he became a turncoat. He started reporting to the White Mantle what the Shining Blade were doing. He betrayed them. He got loads of them killed, flooded out of the jungle. And he got his other two leaders, the two women, Saedra and Avinia, he got them captured in the southern Shiver Peaks, and they were going to be executed on the Bloodstone. So then the two of them get saved by the player character, but Saedra stays behind to battle, uh, I think it's Masar. Um, to, to let everyone else escape. So Avinia is the only survivor. You then, is, you then exact revenge on Marcus. So Marcus gets killed for betraying everyone. Saedra goes down in a blaze of glory against the Masat. And Avinia is the only one left. And Avinia, and, and Avinia becomes the sole leader of the Shining Blade. Works her fucking ass off. Um, and in the Warring Kratos story arc, uh, she eventually goes to fight to try and get support from Ascalon, right? Like, she's like, okay, look, when Ascalon was struggling with the Char, loads of Ascalonians came to Kryta, and we, the Krytans, took him in, and we were nice. Maybe then, now that Kryta is at Civil War, we can ask Ascalon for help. So she goes to King Adelburn, and she's like, Adelburn, please, please come help us, please. And Adelburn basically fobs her off, and he says, fuck you, we're still fighting the Char, my son is dead, because he went to your people in Kryta. You're all bastards. I want nothing to do with you. This is sort of the descent of Adelburn into being a true bastard, right? And uh, and so Avinia's like, no, I can convince him. I'll be fine. I can convince him. And then... Nobody knows. She vanishes. She disappears. She goes missing. Ivinia. Ivinia. We also have a story about Livia, another member of the Shining Blade, who interacted with Avinia, who had the Scepter of Ore for a while and then gave it away to someone. Who did she give it to? Why? When? How? Did she give it to Avinia? No, I'm not necessarily suggesting that Avinia is E. But that mystery, that's like one of the big mysteries of Guild Wars 1. Because she was a huge character. Avinia was a huge character across Eye of the North and Prophecies and the Warring Cryer. And she just vanishes at the end. Never to be seen again in Guild Wars Beyond. Vanishes in Ascalon, like she's been kidnapped by Ascalonians or some shit. Karendu says, uh, War Marshal Varish may succeed at hiding her intentions from the people of Corner, but as a scholar, I have learned to read between the lines. History shows that every re revolution begins with a few brave souls willing to sacrifice everything for the good of the people. Alright, so these are Cornans that actually uh, recognize her corruption. So, you're the Sun Spear you're with the Sun Spears responsible for all the disruption around Corner lately? My name is Karendu, and I assure you the pleasure is all mine. War Marshal Verish, if left to her own devices, will be the end of us all. Anyone who can get her uh, as wound up as you have is a friend in my book. Our history is rife with tyrants who, in the name of a cause they believe in, deliver pain and suffering to the people. I see these same patterns in our beloved War Marshal. I cannot stand idle and watch as our people are fed to the belly of the beast. My sons, Mubata and Snibu... And I have come to pledge our service to you. And now these Cornans have arrived. And they say, is that the smell of rotten corpses on the loose? Quickly over there. And so, uh, the only good spy is a dead spy. Bale always says, let's bring them their corpses as a gift. Be careful, Sinbu. You're no warrior. How Cora, you suck, lady. You don't even have any death penalty right now. What are you playing at? Jesus Christ. Has she, like, got too many runes or some crap on her?
Any recommendations of romantic things to do for or with someone in Guild Wars 2? Romantic things. Huh. Uh, one of the things you tend to see is like on the subreddit, people will commission like fan art of like their girlfriend's main and their main like together. Not necessarily, you know, kissing or whatever the fuck, but you know, like that's a nice thing to do, I suppose. Uh, Mabara says, I saw you almost get yourself killed. You should let others here do the fighting, Snibu. And Snibu says, I won't hide behind a book like you, uh, Mabata. Enough, both of you. We need to leave before more troops discover us. Do we have to escort them back or is that just the quest done? Oh, we have to escort them. Okay. Uh, yeah. Pff, I don't know. That's an interesting, uh... You could, you could roleplay, I guess. I don't know. It's weird because... I, you know what? That's probably a, a sign of a really good MMO. A really good game. That you can easily come up with, like, something romantic to do in it. Right? I don't know. Like, obviously, when it comes to romance, there's a fine line between cheese and romance. And where that line is for your lady, I don't know. Uh, you could probably do quite a few things that I personally would consider quite cheesy. You've been saying fuck like a lot on this stream and it's hilarious because you don't tend to say it during regular recordings. We need a fuck counter. Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 streams for me is just sort of more regular talking. I never made a conscious decision not to swear in videos, ever. I never made a conscious decision. But when, you, when you're when you a bit more planned out with what you're saying, I think... Um, well, for me anyway, when I plan it out a bit better, I tend to swear a bit less. I also don't like to use... If, if I can help it, I'd rather not swear to, uh, to mark importance for something. I'd rather use the actual argument to explain why something is or isn't important. I can't just be like, it's fucking important, blah, blah, blah. Like, if I'm seriously trying to put forward a real discussion on something. But if I'm just shooting shit like I do on the streams, yeah, I tend to swear a bit more. Cheese is always romance. Cheese and wine. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Alright, your girlfriend does like cheese. I don't know. Um, go get a ranger pet. Go get, get capture every single ranger pet in the game. And, uh, and name each one a different word that's a part of a sentence that is a lovely, sweet little anecdote. And then go hang out with her and, uh, and scroll through all of your pets for her so that it's, it, it spells out her name or some shit. I don't know. Something like that. And go on a lovely romantic picnic and do that. <laughs> there you go. That's, uh, <laughs> romancing with wooden potatoes. <laughs> Get the bouquet of flowers and just throw it at her. There you go. Done. That's creative. Thank you. <laughs> so here's another thing, right? We just did it. We just finished a quest to upgrade the command post. But uh, we're going through the command post here to cash the quest in in the hub instead of the command post itself. Because they need to be able to refresh the instance to add the new NPCs there. So it's just like more weirdness. Karendu and his sons will most certainly prove to be vital allies if we stick to a solid plan. I believe we, we may yet succeed in resisting Varish. Once word spreads that Karendu is with us, we'll have many who are sympathetic to our cause out in the countryside. The family has taken refuge in the command post. If you need anything from them, you can speak to them there. All right, guys, the cost quest. That's this is it. Oh wow! Why is it doing this again? Oh, low night. Now we can complete the other one. Okay, building the base. Looks like we're doing well, thanks to you. We have enough supplies to last for quite some time now. Sure, we're still outnumbered and, for all intents and purposes, surrounded. But Varish hasn't found us, and we can hold out for as long as we need to finish this once for all. See, look at this. Look at what we did on this stream today, guys. We 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 hung out. We built up a command post, a base of operations. This has been a good amount of content. This has been like three hours of gameplay. Just building up this little thing. This is such a tiny little part of the whole story. It feels so satisfying. Like the pacing to me of, 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 of the speed that the story progresses here. It feels so nice. The Guild Wars 2 equivalent of this is a 15 minute instance. And, you, and you're gone. You've, you've zoomed off. It really is. Like you can't really contest that. That's what the Guild Wars 2 equivalent is. I feel like you just don't get this experience. You don't get this pace. You don't... 
And I, maybe it's short sighted of me, but my my I point to traditional quests, the lack of traditional quests for 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 this. I don't know. Oh, somebody whispered me. I hope you all got a bit of nostalgia there on the whisper noise there, guys. All right, so we got all of our guys. Now it's time to free Koss. The Great Escape. Get the location of Koss and the captured Sun Spears from Narashi in Arcjock Ward. So we're going to a new new little place to here. Oh. That's weird. I was going to go shopping with my mum. And uh, she said to me, oh, I might be a bit busy. Do you want to do it tomorrow instead? And I said, yeah, I'll do it tomorrow instead. Never mind. Don't worry about it. And she just texted me saying, oh, no, I'm not going to be able to make it. I was like, well, we already agreed on that. Anyway. I still want to. You still want to see me play Dark Souls? Maybe one day. Maybe one day, dude. Uh, we must move carefully. There are calling patrols everywhere. Koss and several others are being held in the garrison to the east. Their captor is an arrogant corn and commander named Kuba. I'm sure if you take out Kuba's single, single, uh, signal scout patrols, you'll be able to lure him from his lair to deal with him face to face. Follow my directions and you should be able to take them out without altering the others. Without, sorry, alerting the others. My reading's awful today because I'm sitting really far back and I don't have my glasses. I've lost them. I don't know where they are. It's very worrying to me. WP, why aren't you using a full group? Uh, because I've decided not to use henchmen and just use the heroes and characters we meet. It's more fun this way. It is said that Varish also has turned her back on the five... Okay, we already read that one. Alright. Oh, she just texted me back and said, Sorry, that was an old draft. I accidentally messaged... Alright, I really don't want to fight these big beasts here because this stuff's actually all really kind of dangerous. So let's just try and worm our way through the countryside without grabbing too much aggro. Here we've got stone shard crags. Are these the first we've ever seen? I think they are. These are some of my favourite nightfall enemies. These are badass. And there is another variety as well. Uh, these are so cool. They're deadly as all hell. Uh, they're elementalists. But look at how cool these things are. Look, I cannot wait to see the Guild Wars 2 version of these. So awesome. Look at this. Big tanky bastards. That's what they are. Ooh, and they do a lot of damage. Alright, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna monitor Milani here to make sure that she keeps strength of honor on her. MOX was his name? What why are we talking about M MOX? You always miss my streams because you sleep in. Well, today's stream's a bit of a weird time. We streamed about 10 hours earlier than I usually would want us to. Servers aren't closed. Of course the servers aren't closed. Apparently this is just sort of being run on some dusty old box somewhere. And they can just sort of leave it there. I think it's really cool of the devs to keep it running. I... It, I have a lot of respect for the internet in a lot of ways. I think that they do consu more consumer-friendly stuff than most companies have to. All right. And I know that the people entrenched in salt will be like, what are you talking about? Blah, 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 blah. But I really do believe that. Uh, it's easy to forget the perks you get for being a part of this community rather than other games. Um, but, and, and, and because of that, the one thing I really hope Arena Net does one day, I really hope they do one day, is I want, when, when Guild Wars 1 or 2 goes down, I really want to see them release some kind of tool or, or, or something that allows people to host it on their own machines so that you will always be able to play it so that you can play it as basically an offline game. Uh, is that too much to ask? Is that is that too insane to allow, you know, to get a, 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 a server client that you can just sort of run? Maybe give it to, to people in the community who have, who have nice juicy servers that can, can handle it. That'd be so cool. It'd be so badass. Oh my god. Open, and at that point, like, open up some modding tools for it as well. There'll be such a fucking resurgence, I can tell you. 
So many people would get so hyped about it, like get all these new ideas of things to do. I would love something like that. I hate the idea of this just dying and never being able to be experienced again. I want to live in the, the happy world where I imagine my grandchildren. I'm like, you need to play this old game. And they're like, but it's not even VR. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you have to play this. But it's all this stupid 2D. It'll be like the equivalent of like black and white, right? To them. But I'll be like, you have to play it. You have to experience this. And I want to think that that's possible. Not just that this shit dies and disappears. It's weird, guys. Like, go. I I've been on the internet long enough now that the early forums I used to browse and the early things I used to do... These websites just don't exist anymore. Backups and archives of them in a lot of places is sporadic at best. And it's, it's funny because people have this weird impression of the internet like it's forever. Like we live in this technological, marvel, wondrous world right now because everything is backed up forever. And this is fundamentally different to any other point in human history, blah, blah, blah. And there's definitely a lot of uh, truth to a statement like that. There is a lot of truth to a statement like that. But it's also surprising how people just take it for granted, the idea that stuff that's on the internet is forever. And in truth, it seems like, honestly, a lot of it isn't forever. And people aren't very good at keeping stuff around. Um, again, uh, so I did a series um, on a game called Azuric on my channel. Uh, one of my uh, favorite Xbox original releases that most people would have played. And what the, one of the guys, like the primary guys that... that funded the uh, maybe didn't fund the development of the game but set up the game studio that worked on the game created the game was responsible for the decision of whether they were going to make a sequel or not understood everything about it right works at arena net 2 and uh he's been he's been leaving all these amazing comments on the, on the azuric series that you can read in the comment section it's incredible um anyway i was talking to him about like the original soundtrack and stuff and uh you know he, he, he was just like yeah I, I don't know where that is anymore like it's just assets and things from these games and these things that have been developed you know this this shit just gets lost just disappears into the ether you think oh it's on a pc it's on a, it's on a hard drive somewhere and it'll never go away but no this stuff does get lost you know and that that's sad you know the original copies of of, of that game soundtrack or, or whatever There's so many different titles Yeah, people often forget that the digital age is dependent on the physical world. No box, no server, no address, no connection. Right, yeah, and it's silly because, uh, I don't know, I feel like it's just people... They, when, you, when you really don't understand anything about the technology at all, anything, like you don't even really know what hard drive is kind of thing, uh, people just hear like these buzzwords like, oh, it's in the cloud, right? Like, the, you know, these media, these marketing terms. And then, and then they just sort of think, oh, it's forever, okay. I was reading about one of SpaceX's plans recently, guys. So cool. They're basically putting like 4,000 satellites into space um, before for around 20, 2030. By 2030, it's like over 4,000 satellites. And or, basically, the story is that satellites that are currently being used, um, companies, when they're putting satellites in space for SatNav and stuff like that, they don't want to take risks. Um, so they, they choose the reliable models, they, they, they choose, and, and basically because they go for reliability, a lot of them are opting to put stuff in space to provide their services. There's like 25, 30 year old technology at this point, like old systems. Um, and what SpaceX is, one of their things is that they're basically trying to uh, put a bunch of uh, new satellites in space that are actually modern day, and um, their, their primary job would be to bring internet to the whole world. And uh, like very fast internet to the whole world. It doesn't necessarily mean much for you guys, you and I, who are watching this stream, right? Like people like us, we already have fast internet. We're in the Western world. We're, we, you know, we're in. Uh, it's not just the Western world. Sorry. We're, we're in developed first world countries, right? Generally speaking, um, and generally our internet's pretty good. Uh, but there are huge areas of planet Earth where there's just no internet at all, like the South Pole, like the middle of the Pacific Ocean like the middle of the Australian outback or like even huge areas where there's actually a lot of human population too in, in, in certain other continents and regions like places in the middle of Africa where there's just very little urbanization. Um, and these places just really don't have access to the internet. But that's what these satellites will be doing. They'll be uh, bringing that internet anywhere, super fast internet anywhere you like. How cool does that sound? Yeah, I was reading about that right before I started reading about how uh, Google Fiber is maybe not going to be a thing anymore and they're going wireless instead of... Because Comcast are fuckers, basically, and there's all these regulation issues. 
where they can't hang their wires and they can't really uh, lay them in the ground either. And stuff. But yeah, what you guys are saying of it being forever, the one thing that does feel forever to me is the idea that, you know, like you take this idea of what SpaceX is doing. You put a hard drive, a server streaming from a hard drive in space in geosynchronous orbit such that it won't fall for millions of years and it will just be undisturbed up there beaming its contents down to earth yeah you can pretty much say at that point that information isn't going anywhere which is kind of a cool thought i always like that idea of when you die putting like your your, your genes or like some some essence of your biology or your life or whatever into a satellite that is you, you launch it into orbit so that it will land like millions of years in the future and it's sort of a way of being immortal because you can mathematically work that kind of shit out which is just mind boggling okay this bit I'm a little bit scared of we've got a corner spotter here so let's just let's just pull this spotter and maybe his group over and see what he does hey buddy do you wanna do you wanna fight us we're close, guys. We're close to getting cross back. Science is really in a place now where it's not even a question of something can be done or not. It's more a question of some money or good material to do it. Oh, I do disagree with that a little. What you just said there is very much uh, like Fringe, <laughs> the TV show. That's like the whole premise of that show. You need to expand your mind. All that matters is do you have the resources? They would just basically have this ridiculous stuff happen every episode. Like, totally ridiculous, unbelievable stuff. Okay, here we, we should focus this priest because he's healing and the main target we've got is blocking a lot. And we don't have long before one of us dies to this pressure. So, come on, Milani. Milani, target the damn priest. Maybe I can just sort of pressure. Maybe we can pressure them all in the end. This is annoying. She's going to die. She's going to die because she's not retargeting. And I can't kill it. Oh my god, she's still alive. Just about. I need to get... Uh... There we go. It moved into my late. No, no, come back now. Why has she gone over there? What are you doing? Jesus Christ. She's going to die now. Look, it's, it's there. Oh my god, she sucks so bad. Look at this. Look at this Guild Wars 1 AI here. Suske to the rescue. Look at that nuke. Look at that knockdown. Saved a life. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. Did you guys see how bad her AI was there? She's doing nothing. This is why you don't run melee uh, heroes, by the way. It's okay if that's a minion doing that crap, but Jesus. She's like a huge amount of our damage. Uh, did they raise it or something? No. This guy, the Commander Kuber, is just blocking so much. I'd rather kill the field commander up there instead. I'm so low on magic, or on mana, energy. There we go. Kill this scribe here. We're getting whittled down here. That, but to be fair, so are they. There we go. Bowman now. I'm the last one alive. <sighs> That's annoying. The, the fight just went on way too long. Basically, they kept targeting the boss here. This boss. And uh, that's really annoying because the boss... I'm going to try and... Nah. Damn it. Troll on you and he heals too much. Yeah, and that's annoying because the boss was getting healed and it was blocking loads as well. So obviously they weren't doing any damage. And she just wouldn't retarget. Christ. Alright, where's... Did we... Where's right back at the start of the map? No, not right back at the start of the map. I'm pretty far back. Alright. Well, I, we knew it wouldn't be easy, guys. It, it, this is going to be basically one of the harder parts of the game. But this is it, though. When we get Koss back, we're going to get Koss and then quite quickly we're going to get another character. Clear-ish soon. Uh, afterwards. I like the cast we're about to have in a second.
Oh, would control targeting, pinging it have, have changed it? You're right. Forgot about that. Yeah, no, you're right. That would have been a good idea. I should have done that. Well, let's kill these two bowmen at the door here and then just push in. Look, guys, you can see them over there. Kind of sucks that Suzuki just wasted his massive cooldowns there. Can you show us a 55 HP build before you end, for old time's sake? I'm sorry, no. Uh, uh, not this stream, but maybe maybe in a future stream I can show you a 55 HP build. For sure. And I'll show you a 600 build. We could have... Look, when we complete Nightfall, we get to the later stages. We can totally... Um, just look how much damage we do now that that priest isn't there. So stupid. Uh, we can totally... Uh, <laughs> mess about with um, trying to like farm again like just for fun be like all right so here's how we do Doha again I can try to get back into the groove of 600s tanking I used to have all these disconnect issues too I used to play with this guy he must have got so annoyed with me this Polish dude I used to farm with all the time but I used to always DC guy probably got super pissed and here we go Woo! he's dancing baby Sups, course, it's been a while. Quite the chapter without you, my friend. See, I wish he was away for longer, but hey. Uh, I'll meet you back at the command post in a flash. Have a few things to take care of before then. Took you long enough. I was getting tired of that Kuba fellow. All about near chewed through my shackles so I could get him myself. Things definitely went south of Gandara, didn't they? So, you found a place to hold up while I was in the guest of these corners? Good, good. We're going to have to see what supplies we can find in the garrison and then pay my Corsair friend a visit. I'll meet you back at the command post. All right, cool stuff, man. So there you go. Um, while we're here, I will show you guys something too. Out of the back of this garrison, can't remember what's going to happen here. Uh, but from the back of the garrison, there's a corner noble here. You'll actually notice that there's this bridge and a sort of a, a direction we can go. Look how plain and distant. Look at this. It's so weird. So empty these maps look. I don't mind getting nuked by this scribe as long as it's me on my own and we're not all getting AoE'd by them, which is good. They're all getting AoE'd by our guy. Look at that thrust action. <laughs> Causing his hip jerks. Yeah, 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 exactly. 10 out of 10 moves. Oh my gosh. Dragon's Breath Wand. That was pretty cool. Yeah, okay, the gate's going to be shut. But over here, you'll notice, guys, actually, we can get pretty close to Gandara again from Arcjock Ward here. So today we saw three different explorable maps. We saw Margo Coast, Arcjock, and the Sunward Marches. Um, oh, no, no, no. We can go through. Here you go. So, yeah, there's this doorway here directly to Gandara, I guess. But here there's also another place called the Pogan Passage. We may as well unlock this while we're here. Lexu! Nice, dude. Congratulations. One year, man. Badass. I can't believe it. Thank you so much. I'm so proud. All right, there you go. So, so anyway, this is the Pogan Passage. We'll just have a quick read here. This area is dominated by one of the many heavily manned garrisons that dot the corn and countryside. However, the landscape around the fort is marked with caverns, chasms, and natural bridges, which the local merchants used to escape the ever vigilant eye of War Marshal Varish's minions. And this, this is one of those maps that's always in the dark. And you can see the Tyrian moon. Bloody looks huge there as well, doesn't it? Very, very, very cool stuff. I swear I saw two moons in one of the skyboxes at some point, but I might just be, be confusing with this with uh, Massa and Secunda from uh, Elder Scrolls. All right, and finally, Lonai. Nice work re rescuing Koss and the other Sunspears. Koss checked with Margaret. Margaret? And she'll have her boat ready for us. But while I was there, I heard of news of more Sunspear evacuees. We have to rescue them. Tell me when you're ready to proceed. We need to evacuate the wounded, but we'll never make it to the coast with everyone in the country against us. However, it seems not all Cornans are happy with Varish. If we can uh, win over more of the populace, it will make the evacuation process that much easier. The local priests may be able to help us with that. But to make all of this work, we'll need a new leader. And I think that should be you. Of course, you'll have to be able to command the respectable Sunspears. Therefore, you must first achieve the rank of Sunspear General or be one of the distinguished leaders Cormir herself recruited from foreign lands. When you're ready, Cos will update you on the evacuation plans. Okay. So, yeah, we uh, we got to get general. This is like the Guild Wars 1 equivalent of the mastery thing. I can't believe people whined so much when it was sort of there already. So, general is going to be in a 1,000 promotion points. So, we're going to have to sort that out. 
because uh, we're not a foreign character. It's called and a hero shall lead them. And at the end of this quest, we will have uh, we'll get a cool cutscene and we'll be trying to get home. So that will be the next stream, guys. I might, uh, if I can find the time, do it off stream or something. The the, the rep grind, or we'll see. We'll see what we can do. It's probably a very quick way to get through it. But yeah, there you go, guys. That's the Nightfall stream for today. We did quite a lot here. We built up a base. We found a safe sanctuary. And what's most important, we got Cost the Boss back. So thanks very much for watching, guys. I'll see you for some more Nightfall next week. And also more regular streams as well. We'll maybe do that voting on his build and such and such forth. Thanks for the sub, Pepper. Pepper Cosmo. <laughs> And uh, thanks very much. And I guess we will see you next time. Also, yeah, Calamari next Wolf Among Us is up. Uh, it will be going up at 7 tonight. So that'll be tonight. Cheers, everyone. Have a good day. Catch you later.